Uh, hopefully I don't have any staticky noise, otherwise I will be a little concerned on that part. I'm going to go take a listen right now. Okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> oh, man. Well, too bad I can't listen to it because I'm watching the uh, Alienware Yeah, don't commercial. worry. Every time we start stream advertisements, don't you just love that sort of thing? Look at that. It, it, the, the stream, the, the commercial brought John out of the hiding because he knows That's it's a right. Yeah, let's like, see. He only shows up for nobody commercials. Nobody will know I'm here. <laughs> yeah, nobody nah, will he know I'm here. came here to talk about Smash. Uh, I know my boy. Are overlaid on top of it so <laughs> well first of all buddy gotcha. how you doing i'm doing pretty good how about you guys i'm doing fine on my end here i'm i'm off of school till february so i feel pretty happy about that <laughs> hey there you yeah, go so so yeah i feel like it's, it's gonna be to a good our- night yeah i'd say that uh but yeah so hello to I mean, everybody when john, comes in, when john comes in here it's definitely gonna be a good yeah. night so, say, so everybody in the chat, how you guys all doing tonight? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day, afternoon, evening, all that jazz, you know. Uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a fun one. We are going to be talking about the final episode of 2020 for PM 2019. So that one is going to be interesting to discuss. We're also going to be talking about the, the big award show that happened uh, last week. And our overall impressions on it. And by overall impressions, we mean that one particular thing that overshadowed everything else. And it was literally at the start of the event. <laughs> literally. We're not even joking, yeah, too. Perfect dark, man. I'm looking forward yep. to it. But uh, aside from that, though, there was Sephiroth and stuff. We'll, we'll obviously get into that soon enough. And uh, anything else in between? I know we got some new little clips and stuff for Coco. I don't think we're going to dive much into the Coco film because we're already yeah. like a 10 days or something away from it. So we're really close to it. I'm just waiting for the OST. God damn. Uh, we finally got the chance earlier today, actually, uh, to listen to Shinji Miyazaki's track for Coco, uh, which I thought was actually pretty nice. It, 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 well, we did. It felt nice to hear his we sound did. font again. You know what I mean? Of course, he's a goat. Oh, yeah. exactly. So, uh, before we get any further into the discussion for tonight, of course, let me introduce everybody here that is on the call. As you guys already know, we got our boy Richie, otherwise known as our Farley Dude ninety seven. How you doing, buddy? Good to be back. Uh, how you guys doing? Glad to hear you doing okay, buddy. And then, of course, alongside that, yes, we got our other pal over here, JPRPT ninety eight. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Good morning to all the Australian people <laughs> watching and. Uh, Everybody else, I don't know. Maybe if, any other relevant time zones awake right now in the morning that I need uh, that I don't know of. Japan, Africa, <laughs> Japan, oh, Japan, Japan. Japan. Let's take a look. Actually, uh, uh, India, India. You know, so That's somewhere, Sergi. Yes, yeah, Sergi's place, I guess. Sergi. I mean, hey, good morning, Sergi. <laughs> if you if you classify AM as morning, I don't know. So, you know, some people have different definitions. Of exactly. Morning, For me, you know? t- once it hits twelve AM, that's good morning to everyone. I, I don't ever say good night to anybody at that hour. Well, I mean, yeah. Hey, hey that works. Out. Exactly. Well, to me anyway. But uh, let's see. Everybody's doing a okay. Uh, it is technically the morning. You are correct on that part. Uh, but let me just uh, close a couple of these things down before we continue. I want to just make sure I got this stuff closed before it accidentally plays in the background. Because I don't want that audio to play in the background. Otherwise, copyrights. Because, woo boy, copyright really is very strong these days. Especially in the middle of the well, holiday. It, for- it, it, forced me, it forced me into retirement of movie OSTs because... I'm just going to bring this up for a few minutes. Um... Fucking, they copyrighted the one of the tracks from well, actually two tracks from movie 17. They copyrighted, well, they copyright claimed, I should probably say, copyright claimed one track from movie 16. So, because I don't want to take the chance because of how complicated that system is, I decided, who, you know, who, it's not who it's claimed not your person. video. Who was the not, person who claimed it? Uh, no, it's just show pro, yeah. A show pro. Okay, so I I know that Shirt had an issue with like the the journeys OST the upload before. Yeah, he told me about it in the DMs. And he he apparently he just replied and said, "Uh, the music is owned by Sony, not Show Pro," and they released the claim. So uh, <laughs> I think I think okay, they're like, well, "Oh well, no, this case, guy knows his stuff." Wait a minute, <laughs> abort well, case, mission, I'll guys. <laughs> in I that case, they, I think they just see Pokemon anime like in the thing and they see the picture and they're like, oh, it's like this guy's uploading an entire episode. Time to take it down. And they don't even bother to watch what the actual video is. So it do, it do be yeah, like that on YouTube. Mostly, well, that's because it's mostly automated anyway. 
Exactly. Yeah. I know uh, <laughs> yeah, a good pal, uh, Rogers Bass, uh, he recently got hit hard uh, with a copyright strike on his channel in a live stream at that. And he's no longer oh, able to actually, live stream no more until March of 2020. Also, where's that rapping noise coming from? Um, but other than that, though... I have it. It's called Atkins. It calls a, it's called a fucking uh, granola... Not a granola bar, but a, a protein okay. bar. But, uh, yeah, he got hit by a copyright strike. And, unfortunately, that affected him from doing live streams until March. And he's a content creator with over 200 plus subscribe, uh, 200,000, you know, subscribers. Um, so it, it just shows you that no matter how big, small, whatever kind of content you create, the copyright system will ultimately mess you up at the end. Even I he's also, concerned too, that he's starting to tell people to start, uh, subscribing and even following him on his other Twitch channel, which is of course, uh, Rogers base here, I believe on Twitch. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't blame him either, but it just shows you that we still are. In a day and age where copyright can do whatever the hell it wants, and despite it being under fair use and whatnot, they don't care. They're still gonna claim your ass because, as TSS stated before, guess what? It's all automated. So I only yep. can just wish for the best and for Roger. When and one of your videos, he'll be fine with that stuff, man. Yeah, and I just want to point out that when one of your videos does get uh, get claimed, if you want to dispute the claim, then it doesn't really go through YouTube when you hit to dispute claim and you write up your little summary of why you're disputing it uh, it does not go to YouTube it goes back to the person who claimed it which is like wow you're you're gonna change their mind yeah I don't think so I, I've seen maybe maybe two or three cases win in like 10 years it's it's not something Terrible that happens. And right even now. then, that's just by technicality issue. Like, with, oh, right, by the way, we are a different company or some shit like that. And it's like you have to yeah. you have to well, be lucky just to work around the system. I'll give I'll give you a good example on um on the channel that I upload like the Elton John shit. I uploaded um I think it was like some of the Live Aid stuff that they didn't officially release because it was um it was not like suitable for the DVD broadcast. Like for example. Um, I'm still standing. Had um, feedback issues, and mm -hmm. nobody cares about the cover of "Can I Get a Witness?" <laughs> yeah. And um, and a random German company um, claimed that and blocked it worldwide. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm still standing, but they used the wrong song. They 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 copyright claimed it as Benny and the Jets. So I said, number one, you don't you're you're not you are not Rocket Records, and you are not you know Elton John. And number two, you have the song wrong. <laughs> and about two days later, they and about two days later they dropped it. Oh, only two days! Wow, you got pretty lucky. Yeah, yeah. some people it take weeks, even months. Oh, <laughs> I, I had one video. I had one video claimed. It's still up on YouTube. You can still watch it. But um, mm. you know, it's I'm no longer making revenue off of that video, which is sad because it's one of my most popular videos. It's like the top ten best battles in the anime. I played maybe I don't know three, four years ago. And oddly enough, I've never been I've never been claimed for a uh, a theme from the Japanese version, like Shinji Miyazaki's music or anything like that. Knock on wood, because if they did do that, I'd be uh, losing a lot of stuff. But uh, I got I got claimed for a cover of Paul's dub battle theme that was included in the video, oh. not even by the person who made the cover, but by the Pokemon Company International. So. Fantastic! Wow. So they you care get, about the <laughs> Yeah, you won't get you won't get claimed for uh, the Shinji Miyazaki's music I, most of I, the time, but you will get claimed for dub music. I, is, I was hoping. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh go whoa. ahead. I was done. No, I was I was hoping I was hoping you weren't going to say okay the guitar and orchestrated instrumental. No, no. I I think I think as long as maybe if you're using just like background music like you're talking over it or if you're using like a snippet of it you're not using like the whole thing you mm -hmm. should be fine even if you do use the whole thing like i don't think i don't think those videos get taken down very often i don't think it's really something that they care about i know hayashi has a much like stricter thing with copyrights like if you upload hayashi music you're much greater risk than miyazaki music also it's because um, they're actually released you know yeah, that there's that too, of course, and I don't, I have no clue why they would copyright the the Pokemon dub music because it's like that's never been released. They never released the background <laughs> music for the Pokemon dub because nobody would want it. And 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like I don't, I don't know. Maybe they just don't want people to know that it exists. I, I, I'm convinced. Even they're, they're embarrassed by them OST and they don't need. <laughs> yeah, they, they just want to do like this whole cover up campaign. Like, oh, we, we can't let people know this exists. That it's out there. That we're doing this, so we're just gonna take down any trace of it online. I guess. Yes, it is unfortunate. I'm embarrassed. Though. Oh, hey there. As well as Polly hmm. and uh, TSS. Oh, yes. Because Hello. we had these three hop in while I was doing the introduction for everybody else in the call, and y'all decided to come in after the intro. So let, let's reiterate oh, once yeah. again I'm we have good. Richie, we have JPR, PT98, we got Tyrone, we got three, we got TSS Killer, and we got our pal Age of Trade slash Polly. So, uh, all right, now that we got the whole squad rolling here, how's everyone yeah. actually doing yeah, tonight? We're <laughs> properly. Hey. Good. Today is gonna be a Back, uh, today. Today is a great. Today is today is a great Damn, day. Damn, that completely contradicts what I just said. <laughs> today, is, today is a great day because this is the first day that we could finally push back the Backstreet Boys. Slightly. I'm happy. Bye, bye. No way. But it's the bye. first step, and that's important. Boys. All right. Yeah. But as always, wash your fucking yeah. hands. Even even oh, if this shit. thing is a success and everything, just know. Just continue to be actual good with your, you know, hygiene and shit. Keep yourself clean. Keep it yourself. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. If, if any, if anything, the pandemic should have should have uh, taught us that I'm not washing my hands enough. <laughs> what What is, is all this is green glow in the here? dark shit I have in my hand? You know. Mm -hmm. TSS, yeah. you're gonna wind up like SpongeBob, where he like scrubbed his hands so hard that just nubs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me, I'm sterile. Oh. I'll always love this. Is, is this the last part of the of, of the year, Joey? No. Six, five, oh, how about how's about that endings ranking? I don't think this is the last part of the year. We we, we got, got one we, more we, pod we, for the we year. We got well, we got well. To be, fair, more, to be fair, to be fair. Well, to be fair. This is not the last technical airing of Pokemon this year. We're not talking about the. Um, well, by the way, next week is going to be the um, movie twenty two. movie twenty two re airing, but there's also going to be a Christmas special on Christmas Day. Even though I have a feeling that's going to be a rerun. However, with mm -hmm. new segments. Yeah, so but the technically pod, that's going to be an error. As far as the pod goes, we got the twenty first and the twenty eighth. Unless we're doing nothing on the twenty eighth. Um, that well, first of all, as I stated before, we just have we one pod here. left for this year. There's a reason for that, oh, but so we'll get doing, into that not, not, a not, little not, into now. We're, uh, we're not doing the twenty eighth then. Huh? No, no, no. We'll we'll get into that further, but uh, okay, for okay. now, we just want to reiterate: there should be just one pod left for this year. I'll, <laughs> I'll have an announcement for the last pod. Yeah. So, with okay. that being said, though, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how things will turn out. I'm very excited for uh, our end of the year discussion and all that. It's been a blast. We've gone through 72, 73 sessions by the end of the year at this point, And it is an absolute honor to be able to, once again, uh, be able to work on this oh, shit, series with you all. You know, we, we've shifted from traditional Pokepod. Media, not yeah, thank me, you. Thank you, Media, uh, to... Media. To just traditional, what do you call it? Um, the the regular Pokepod, the Pokepod R, and then going into the Pokepod World, of course that we are in, and then now of course with the Pokepod World Year Two that we're gonna get into uh, in twenty twenty one, it's looking very very exciting. I'm happy to be uh, entering the new year with a lot of hope for what could be coming down with all of us and. Even then, I, I hope that with the new year for the pod, we take a little bit more of opportunities to sort of explore concepts that we we never really touched upon in the first year for obvious reasons, <laughs> given that, you know, the, the mm. Backstreet Boys came in in an awkward time and kind of shifted a lot of the projects I had initially in mind and pushed all that shit aside, man. But uh, so far, though, I, I've been very happy that uh, things this year went successful with all of us here, I hope, and... Uh, I, I feel like a lot of us kind of got an idea as to the direction we want to take things for 2021. And uh, we'll see where things go for the following year. Will things go for the better? You know, we, we can only hope and wait and see. Until then, though, let's just continue to celebrate the good times. Come on. So 
Yeah, yeah. Yes. and uh, no, that's all I gotta say for a time. Celebrate good times. Come <laughs> Boca on, Pod Universe. No, that's gonna be <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, but uh, somebody right. said Boca Pod Universe. No, nah, we're not there yet. We have to start celebrating no. the world aspect, which you will be seen soon enough in regards to that part. Then we got New Galaxy. Yeah. Then we got we got to take it to the galaxy. skies. We're actually gonna finally start galaxy. talking to Los Aliens that we've been hinting about for like. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Los Aliens, where we still know what the fuck they are. And yeah, the, man. And the, yeah. And the, did you guys know that next episode, we're going to have, the, yeah, episode, we're gonna have the Israeli guy on who's been talking to the aliens for the last 30 years. So. He, he will be the one to yeah, give us the answers we seek. Oh, you mean uh, what? What about the what about the aliens guy from the History Channel? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no. did, you, did you guys see that? Someone, someone wrote an article about uh, like no, there isn't a uh, an alien base underground on Mars. But like the the guy who wrote the article, you man, you man, and it was like, yeah, nice try, buddy. Mm. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, oops, that that was close. Nice try, Martians. <laughs> uh, you'll never get that dumb. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> actually, here's another thing I want, to, uh, I want to talk about. Actually, since we're going to be talking about video games probably most of this hour, yes, um, so so Nintendo for the Nintendo Online in Japan and in the U and in North America, they released. They're going to be releasing two separate uh, batches of games. Like they're not actually the same. No, they are not the same. Um, like for example, in the U.S., it's going to be Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Country Three, Diddy, Diddy yeah. Kong, Double Trouble, The Ignition Factor, Super Valus Four, Tough Enough, and then for the NES, it's Nightshade. Um, for the Japanese one, it's going to be hold on, it's going to be on the, these motherfuckers. They don't put the damn descriptions in there. It's going to be it's um for the S for the for the Super Famicom, it's um. Kunio kun no dodgeball da yo zen So it's a dodgeball. It's I think it's basically okay. like a Japanese version of Super Dodgeball. Oh, nice. And then um the next title is well, it's Super Donkey Kong 3, so it's the same game. It's Dixie it's Donkey Kong Country 3. Okay. And then and then um the 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 firefighting game is called Firefighting in Japanese. So it's the same game. And then the final, um, the final one is um, gonna be um, Sugoi. Let's see, Sugoi Hebere. Let's see, Hebereke. Sugoi Hebereke, Sugoi Hebereke, which <laughs> looks like actually um, Sunsoft's interpretation of a game, kind of like Power Stone, Sugoi. except for the except for the Super Super Famicom, because it's like a four player battle kind of thing Sugoi. where you attack each other. And then the final game for the S for the uh, then there's gonna be one more game which is gonna be Smash Ping Pong for Smash the, the for for Famicom. So those are the four games for Japan and four games for North America. So they're completely different. Although I find it funny that we're getting Super Valus Four, but I think they already got Super Valus Four in uh, in Japan already. Mm-hmm. There's some. Uh... There's some game news I've got too. What's up, man? Mm. Um, Pokemon Go is um, celebrating the movie, the Coco movie as well, where if you take pictures of some of the Pokemon in Pokemon Go, you actually get a um, selfie, you get a photo bomb. I'm sorry, of Jesse and James in their movie 22 outfits. And all I got to say is, I uh, Jesse dim shoulders. <laughs> you mean movie 20, movie yeah. 23? Movie twenty three. Yeah, movie twenty three. I'm sorry. Uh, I think you. I think you said movie twenty two. And it, man, my oh boy. yeah, because the yeah, movie twenty two are next week. Tyrone, yeah. Tyrone, you're cheating on Cassidy. I thought. I, I thought you're. Sub- I'm Cassidy. sorry. Cassidy needs to show up in movie twenty three with some shoulders. Then. She's never Damn. Gonna show <laughs> so speaking of the designs, I just have to say I really love that they kept very similarly to the uh, the movie twenty one designs. Like these kind of look like an evolution of that same style. <laughs> Right. which I really appreciate. Not only for Ash, but also for Team Rocket, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. Also, by the way, don't look at the OST track list. I feel like that track list might have spoiled yeah, I was something. Say, don't look at that shit, folks. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm not going to... not look at it. it. You yeah, speaking yeah. of what Jesse... Jesse been showing out in these movies. Remember the fucking uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back remake movie? Yeah. Remember that shit? 
re, remember the, the bond she was spotting? I see the virtual <laughs> chat. I really <laughs> <laughs> Jesse been showing out. Who's she trying to impress? Yeah, yeah, and they they didn't they never touch on the one thing that's you, important. That's no, they her. touched upon it. In fact, mm -hmm. they actually nodded in it in the in the movie. But that's as far as that shit went. And yeah, I'll never do it in the show because the exactly. man is dead. Yeah, yeah. And then, wow, um, wow. am I wrong? Yes. No, no, we're just you two. From the first better. movie, perhaps these events are best forgotten. <laughs> but um, Wait, there's what also is this white void, Henry? <laughs> 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 but then also, there's um, they are. I believe today is the last day you can enter because the poke the uh the Pokemon Players Cup two just ended this weekend. Well, uh, the well, the weekend that just passed. So the Players Cup 2 just ended. So today may be your last chance to get it. Yeah, actually it is. Uh, December 14, 2020, I believe, is the last day. Uh, you enter the code PC2. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Yeah, P put PC2 final stream. And then you'll get your golden bottle cap. And the yeah. golden bottle cap has the ability to increase your Pokemon's IVs to perfect for all IVs if they're at level 100. So that yep. that this is your last chance, I believe. After today, it's done. So go ahead and get that. Which I'm doing right <laughs> you now. You got an hour yeah, and a half, boys. So get to it. Yeah, get, yeah, yeah get your golden bottle it. cap. But yeah, other than that, I believe that's the major things. We you know the Players Cup two happened. Uh, Wolf Glick is the official champion of the Players Cup two. So congratulations to him. Oh. Yeah. So he he won and um. I'm going to probably try to look into his team later and see what team he used. It's probably the same game. I think he, he mostly got recognized for using Colossal. So uh, the Gigantamax Colossal, which is a very, very common choice. Weakness policy, Steam Engine, Dragapult, you surf on everybody, and it also hits Colossal, so the Steam Engine makes it faster and the Weakness Policy activates. It's a good strategy. Good strategy. Um, Sounds like it takes a while so, to set yeah. that up, though. Uh, it, it's not as complicated as it needs to be. I know a lot of trainers used to do the Aqua Jet on Colossal in order to activate the Steam Engine and the Weakness Policy, but I guess Surf it does the bonus of damaging the opponents because you yeah. get to damage everybody. So, so that's your that's the choice that they make. And there was a lot of other good, interesting combos as well too. So, uh, so yeah, but make sure um, TPCI has the entire uh, Players Cup. On YouTube, if you want to go check that out, but I believe TSS Richie Terrell and I actually watched some of it. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was a good time. So make sure you go check that out and uh, enter the code. Uh, I'll type it in the chat as well. PC two, PC two. Uh, no, it's PC two finals stream. Finals. Yeah, finals. make sure you put that extra S in there. Finals. So finals. Stream. Yeah, put and remember, finals. remember, 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 the I is a one. Yes, thank you, TSS. Yeah, You're welcome. Uh, and yeah, and I is replaced with one for obvious reasons, but but yeah, make sure you put that. Um, so you get it's uh, on. it's it's expired now. Oh, it's expired now. Damn. Yes. Well, it said December fourteenth, so I thought that meant after that the fourteenth. That probably means Monday, not. So they it's probably so meant, they probably meant December 14th at 2 a.m. Because normally 2 a.m. is when they shift. Ah, the yeah. yeah. I only so, say okay, that because so Daly's just always came. taught me that shit. Okay, so I mean, this, when I looked on Serebii, it didn't show the exact time. It just says the date. Well, well it's gone. So, yeah. Well, it's gone. <laughs> but you can still check out the Players' Cup, too. Yeah, I'd watch it. Watch that stuff. That's really yeah. It's really good, and if you're into competitive battling, you'll learn a lot. I, I believe one of the things I do when I want to competitively battle, the first step I take before I even build my team is to watch, you know, pros play and see what they're doing, because a lot of people are going to be trying to implement that anyway. And you can find some either a some hard counters or b build a team around it. Hmm. So yeah, but I believe that's all the news on on games. I I think there's also a. Uh, an, let's see, an online store in the in the UK for Pokemon Community that announced that they're going to be doing the uh, something about Zarude all the way up until the 18th. There's like yeah. a code that for Zarude. 
Yeah, so it's probably the regular Zarud that that uh, Japanese people. Yeah, got. there you go. That's so the one. Pre-order. Yeah, so they're getting the same Zarud that you would have gotten if you pre-ordered the movie ticket. Yeah, and that's the that's available for until December. And it's not the daddy, and it's not the daddy Zarud because the daddy Zarud is only available in the uh, Japanese movie theaters when the when you actually Wait go until there. Wait until twenty twenty one to get Zarud. It usually comes dead in. version. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because basically, yeah, because basically, the the pack comes with the code card, um, a card, a uh, a new a new disc for um, is that star, mm -hmm. and yeah, and 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 a, and a and a playing card. Yeah, and so, I believe the only other thing for Pokemon Go, it already happened, but I thought it was funny. Whoopers invaded the uh, the gaming awards, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. was Don funny. had a field day with that one. It made me happy to see him at because Whooper was his. Yeah. Uh, his fa or is his favorite mod. So it's comic cartoons. We do not know that yet because the stats for that aren't released. Haven't released yeah, yet. We're yeah, we're still waiting for that. I mean, if you data mine the shit, then yeah, you will know about it. But oh, then you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll figure that. it out. Yeah, but officially, we do not know. Yeah, I can make some assumption based on how Zarud looks. I think it's a ta it's physical attack. It has high entice. defense. High, yeah, high physical attack. No, no, and high defense, it's gonna be probably, high defense, like, high right. special defense because it got a piece of cloth that's gonna protect it even more than compared to before. <laughs> oh, uh, listen, man, I'm just following anime logic. The more you hold on to stuff, the more defensive you become. Or is that the other way around? I don't really know. I mean, the scarf it could have could be increasing its speed, like fucking choice scarf. Red Dragon, I already got my Zarud like freaking a month and a half ago. Because when, oh, when the pre orders Okay, so the base stats are already here. Okay, the base stats are here, but not the so, moves, right? KG's kind of right. Um, Its defense is at 105. Its highest stat, though, is its attack, which is at 120. Okay. And it's got uh, – its speed is at 105, so that it's tied with its defense. Yeah. And then its lowest stat is its special attack at 70. Special defense is at 95. Base HP is at 105, making for a solid 600 base stat mod, which is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but for the folks, but for the folks that want the regular Zarud, you would either have to get the Japanese um, pre-order ticket, which has the Celebi code on there too, uh -huh. or you have to do the UK thing. That's the only thing yeah. that you can. That's the only way you can get legitimately the regular Zarud. Yeah, Daddy Zarud, you have to go to the Japanese. Hey man, thing. I got these Zarud yeah, TCG cards. Can't I just use the TCG card to get me a Zarud? No. No. You're, well, thinking the, you're, thinking of, you're, you're thinking of the you're thinking of the e-reader days. Other than other than his type, which someone just brought up in the chat, the sad the sad thing about Zarud here is that he doesn't learn knockoff. He doesn't. Why? I don't know why. Why does he not learn knockoff? I don't know, but his signature I, move is uh, jungle healing, which the user becomes one with the jungle, restoring HP and healing any status conditions of itself and the ally. So yeah, in addition, that, that'll healing, at least be good for VGC. But like oh in single, God, it's like you know? it's like man, not having knockoff is like a big blow to his kit. But John, I hate to tell you, Zeru probably won't be in the uh, VGC. No, it's probably banned. Oh it's well, yeah, that's right. It's a mythical. Yeah, it's, it's a mythical. mythical. Why would they? Why would they give it like a VGC signature move, move if it's not gonna be in VGC legal? What? That's stupid. Oh, oh I can God. tell you why because they've done that with mythicals all the time. It's the ha ha ha. I can't be in a competition thing. Yeah, it's actually so dumb. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, Add that to the list of why online. mythical Pokemon are dumb and they should fix them. <laughs> Very dumb. Maybe, I think, maybe they, like, maybe I think they allowed some mythicals to actually gain the status of being in VGC. Have they? No. No, I don't. I don't believe so. I thought. Uh, I thought some made migrations over. But uh, yeah, that they'll unban. They'll unban. You know, Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre, who are infinitely more broken than anything a mythical could bring to the table. Oh, I, oh yeah, I'll I literally Mega, don't know the reasoning why. It's so yeah. strange. They'll bring Mega Evolution back, but only for Rayquaza. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's all the video game news we got Pokemon wise. Obviously, we got more video game news to talk about because a certain event happened. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess it's yeah. still tied to Pokemon as well, given the trailer showed <laughs> off all of the Pokemon minus Charizard, Squirtle, and Ivysaur. And Lucario, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I, I sh it showed off, and it's in order to. It showed off Mewtwo, showed off uh -huh. Pikachu, and it showed off Greninja. 
in that trailer. Yeah. Which boy, oh boy, Pikachu yeah, Pikachu was first of all he he was dead. He he didn't contribute nothing. And that man was dead. Right yeah, after he's it. just straight up dead in the background. Uh, but I guess we should start talking about it because I feel like this is gonna be the meatiest part of this discussion. Yeah, let me get my suit. Real quick. Uh, but yeah, let's get to this one. Beginning off with none other than the big Smash event itself. It kicked things off for the Game Awards with the One Winged Angel himself, Sephiroth from the Fire Emblem, uh, not Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Emblem. Why is it Fire Emblem? Yeah, it's because he's an anime swords fighter. God damn it. But no, although yeah, exactly. I do wanna, I do wanna clarify yeah, about no. the anime swords fighter. A lot of people always say that, but I think many people need to understand when you think about the anime swords fighter, Sephiroth is technically the anime sword fighter. The, like he, he's the definitive the anime swordsman. You know, like when you think of that, you think of Sephiroth, especially his long ass weapon that he has with him that's twice his body size, as you could see in the. God damn, I know. Yeah, so, yeah, have you seen the Kung Fu Panda? Yes, edit? I you... have. <laughs> <laughs> you don't belong in Smash. Yeah. You're just an anime sword fighter. I'm not just an anime sword I'm fighter. The I'm anime... the anime sword, anime sword fighter. fighter. I also love the other edit somebody did a drawing of uh, that focuses. Actually, no, it wasn't a drawing. It was a meme. It was like uh, this guy was eating a bag of chips, but it had Cloud's face on it. And then Sephiroth comes out walking through the wall and Cloud's like, I can't have nothing in this house. Nothing in this house. <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. It like, uh, always had me laughing, man. I, I absolutely love this trailer. I think I'm going to say this right now. That is like, oh, that is shoot. the best Smash trailer we've ever received. Ever. It mm. was it was so good. Just like the, the colors and the and the choreography. And just literally it was, ripping it was, it was off very well done. Uh, Advent Children. I mean, f- animation Children. for animation. Oh, that was a complete rip of advent children a lot of people might not know that and then of course the the shock value of, of killing mario yeah that's also actually a part of advent children too. poor mario poor mario, poor mario. I'm mario. Dead. this boy has been blown up by creepers stabbed by sephiroth fucking uh caught by the animal crossing kid fucking, he's just had a bad Although, to be fair mind. in my to-do list getting stabbed by it sephiroth really is definitely up there so i mean he he got punched into a different dimension by Sonic. Like uh, I'm gonna Jesus punch you into Christ. Minecraft. <laughs> he got stabbed by Ridley. Like Mario. No, he didn't get stabbed by Ridley. Then he crunched, crushed his skull. Yeah, Ridley just killed him. Yeah, Ridley like skewered his tail. No, that was Mega Man. Yep. Mario, Mario got oh, his head yeah, crushed. Right. Like literally squished. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I love, I love Smash trailers though, where they fight the newcomer. But I kind of wish they had put up a better fight against. I mean, I get it. They did that to show off Sephiroth's strength, but you do damn, realize like, we're talking about Sephiroth, right? I Sephiroth. Know, we're talking about yeah, Sephiroth, Sephiroth but, man. But damn, that which is great for his trailer, but it makes the other Smash characters suck. Though in to be fair, at the same time, he's a villain, and the fact that he look, you have to understand as well. Literally, they were having a struggle in the beginning of the trailer. Trying to kill off the freaking what was his gallium or whatever he's, that thing is called, gallium, yeah, gallium. yeah, and then Sephiroth comes gallium. in and it just gallium. one slices it with ease. Well, yeah, that's what Sonic did to Taboo. Yeah, but Sonic ain't no wrong. Taboo. He couldn't do that shit with this one here, and he was in the yeah, trailer Sonic. too, actually. Sonic can do shit. No. Yeah, he was there. So let, let that just show you the magnitude. That's uh, I love that he did that out of pure spice. Like, now nah, this is how you do an entrance into a Smash trailer. <laughs> he 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 that's kills right, the that. god of Smash Brothers. Yeah, they they tried to show off because I remember when Mega Man's trailer dropped. Mega Man got his ass whooped, but they did that so they can show that off that when he dies, he has the same animation as the uh, the video game. Yeah. So I get why that happened, but Sephiroth just sort of swiped everybody. Yeah, Bayonetta, Greninja, <laughs> Mario couldn't even put a... Yeah, seeing, Bayonetta, seeing Bayonetta lose to Sephiroth in, in a way kind of made me sad. I'm like, I thought you were OP. What happened? He, he, have you not seen that range that Sephiroth wields, man? That You can't catch to that shit at all, buddy. Bayonetta. I think it's com- comedic that they also did it too because Bayonetta usually kills angels. So it's ironic that the one winged angel is the one that does her over. And boy, what a goddamn trailer. I'm, I'm still going to say that. 
That that was a fantastic trailer, man. Through through it, it was absolutely fantastic. All the reactions that came out of it thought, were phenomenal as well, man. I I thought Square was gonna be too stingy to give a Sephiroth. That's why I wasn't even expecting. I know. I think everybody was more suspecting the the music that's gonna be in Smash to be the stingy part. Which congratulations, everybody. We're gonna get one new track. In Smash Brothers, one new ah, ah, ah. and even that out there, you know, yep. because uh, the song that plays in the background. Wait, is that a remix version of uh, One Wing? Yes, Angel, but I do want to clarify on that. It is a remix, but it isn't a new remix. It's actually a song used ah. from Advent Children, mm. which I stated beforehand. If you watch the trailer and Advent Children, you'll know that the scene is literally pretty much frame per frame. They literally replicated. Advent Children's fight between Cloud and Sephiroth in that game, or in that okay, film. Okay, they're mentioning Sora. Speak, speaking of Sora, the one they didn't they use the One Wing Angel remix again in Kingdom Hearts Two. Not that one, but they used a different version. When of he it. was in the game, yeah. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> is that a, is is the Kingdom Hearts Two version in a remix Kingdom Hearts Two exclusive, or is that one that they made from a? Different I want to say it's an exclusive. Okay, so Kingdom Hearts 2 has their own version of One Wing Angel. This song has been remixed a lot, so I, I just got to clarify which is which. Because this they, they use this song a lot. Because Sephiroth, Sephiroth, Nobunaga, Cloud, and Link are the four swordsmen of video games. They have been in more games and crossed over in other games. Link has been in Soul Calibur 2 and other games. Nobunaga has been in a fucking Pokemon game, for Christ's <laughs> sakes. Pokemon? Okay, yeah, Nobunaga is the main villain in, I think, Devil Kings, and he's the main villain in Pokemon Conquest. Mm -hmm. um, fucking uh, Sephiroth has been in multiple games, including a Yokai Watch game, for Christ's yeah, sake. Yeah, fun fact, and, yeah. do you know that Ariana Grande actually fought Sephiroth canonically? You what? didn't notice? <laughs> Bro, what? Wait, you guys don't know this? Wait, canonically, what? you can actually let Ariana Grande no? fight against Sephiroth. What are you, you talking about? Hold on a second. Need, let let like, me get this shit real quick. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in one of the games, uh, I forgot what it was called. Um, ah, shit, what was it called? Final Fantasy Brave X XVS or something like that? Um, uh -huh. Ariana Grande was actually in that game, alongside with some other ones like Katy Perry, for example. What? Yes, yeah, so what? canonically, yeah, uh, Katy Perry, Ariana Grande are some of the characters that are in that game that can fight with uh, with Sephiroth or against Sephiroth. I, I shit you not, that's Jesus. actually a true thing. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. That's weird. It's amazing, though. I, I, and also, I think Ariana Grande made like a Final Fantasy remake. Oh, there it is. Ariana is a Final Fantasy character. What the fuck is this world this called? This was out for a long oh, time. Oh, God, that is. She's got like a black bunny yeah, outfit. Yeah, she's called Dangerous Ariana. Fuck? She even made a song for Final Fantasy I, as well bad, uh, in that game. Thank you, next. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the song Thank they remixed, or was it Touch It? I, I forgot which one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just flabbergasted. The Katy Perry and Ariana Grande are in fucking Final Fantasy. I'm trying to figure this world out right now. Drake and Josh is a Sephiroth <laughs> one. Wait a minute. And if Sephiroth was in this, he was also in Kingdom Hearts and in Smash Brothers. That means that in the video game world, Mario knows Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> Only Mario, oh not other characters. And Sora. Yeah, and Sora. <laughs> the lore gets deeper. <laughs> the, 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 this oh, lore makes my deeper, head hurt, man. man. Now, a lot. Speaking of Sora, Sora, a lot of people are actually kind of upset with the absence of Sora. But you gotta realize they they can't just fight Square for Sora. They gotta fight Disney, <laughs> the, the 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 strongest fucking. So you want your Sora? Aren't you? <laughs> how, how do I uh -huh. get Sora in Smash? We gotta buy you. Oh well, I see. <laughs> Hey, we got buy you, motherfucker. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get through Mickey Mouse first. And he, if you thought Sephiroth was tough. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Dun, 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 dun. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I said, bitches, I mean money. Yeah, oh. he, he was the one that created that song, man. I, I'm just saying, no, Sephiroth's inclusion in, uh, in Smash is... I will is, not be just a memory. <laughs> you want a door to darkness? <laughs> 
Oh, also, this, doesn't Cloud get a new move uh, now? He gets Omni Slash. Then that's now? a good question, and actually, I have a response to that. Yeah. Um, tune yeah, how's in that going to work? This week, actually, for we are going to be getting a detailed look into Sephiroth's inclusion in Smash Brothers yep. in the Pretty Sakurai good. Presents uh, Direct. So I'm very excited to see that. And uh, we're probably going to get information as to when Sephiroth is intended to release. So I'm looking forward to that when it comes out. Uh, you know what? You know what's interesting about that? Uh, yeah, go real right quick. Ahead, buddy. Um, I know they mentioned it. I, I know they mentioned it in the Japanese video description for the event because obviously you can look that up as they usually have that scheduled. But I find, and not that it means anything anyway. So don't take this as one of those things. That's oh, where'd you going deep? You know, whatever. Um, but usually Nintendo, because Nintendo tweets about it. Normally they have like a tweet right under that just that just says, oh yeah, by the way, no new fighter information, so don't expect it. But yet for this one, we didn't see it. But yet the only other time that you can find that, you know, information or confirmation is in the Japanese video description. So maybe they forgot or Wait, what's... the Japanese Nintendo maybe Twitter I'm mentioned looking... it, but not the other one. I could have forgot. I just thought it was they probably, they probably forgot. Yeah. They got tired at this point from reminding fans. They're, they're like, fuck, don't figure it out. They, they, they probably figure at this point people shouldn't expect information on the other fighter when they're presenting well, well, this I fighter. Did, well, I disagree because, uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I get your reasoning and I agree, but I disagree in the sense that, you know, no one's going to, you know, that's not going to prevent anyone from not thinking that, so. Well, I mean, um, people can always expect it, I yeah. suppose, but. I mean, I'm not, expe- I, I mean, I'm I, not expecting I, anything. I think they're getting way ahead of themselves because it's like that's, you know, they, they want to make sure this character sells before they, you know, put another one in your face. Laura Croft is in this game too. Sorry, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I guess if I had to make tree. a prediction, just throw something out there. I'm gonna say that Cloud only gets Omni Slash version five when he's using the final smash on Sephiroth. That makes and sense. I guess okay. for everybody else he still has regular Omni Slash. That's fine. I, I can mm-hmm. live with that. It's just like when um when Star Fo- when Fox does his final smash on Wolf, he actually mentions like yeah, yeah, there's like some yeah, alterations. Yeah, but that, that, that's normally I, just I like a that's voice clip, not an actual straight up change to a. Oh well, yeah, smash but I mean, but yeah. you know, time has passed now, so like yeah, true. I, they could do also, much more now. Also, happy fifth yeah, anniversary to Cloud's inclusion in Smash Brothers. That's crazy. To Five years ago, wow. we got Cloud. Five years later, Sephiroth's like, all you know, right, I feel it. bad for Cloud. It took like Cloud had Smash Butters to escape from Cloud, yeah, and, then Cloud and then Cloud, and then Sephiroth decides to show up, and be like, yeah, boy, <laughs> I'm here now. Well, like, if yeah, I'm not mistaken, boy, this gone? is the first time that Cloud has actually been featured in like one of the cinematic trailers for Smash. Uh, even in his own reveal, he did not get a cinematic trailer like the other. No, he actually, did. he didn't get it amongst other DLC fighters because none of the DLC fighters in Smash Four got a uh, a cool cinematic. Even the the Ryu trailer that you think is cinematic, no, no that was all cutscene uh, from the game itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, all yeah. the. But I mean, you look at you look at like even World of Light, like that thing where all the characters are there. Uh, I'm pretty sure Cloud is like one of the only ones that is. Which we so. didn't understand as to why, because I believe Sakurai said he was the last character they could obtain. Therefore, Cloud's inclusion in the World of Light was pretty much non-existent because of it. So yeah, so it's nice to see that finally, after five years, Cloud gets to be in one of these trailers, even if it's not his own. But yeah. man, that was a solid. I, the, the... Well, of course, it has to be. Of course, it has to be when Sephiroth appears, so that's a... Yeah, right? Bad. He's like, God damn it, I can't get away from this guy. I can't get away from this man. Shit. Yeah, and, you know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. Both Samus and Cloud are the only ones who are like, no, not this fucking asshole. Why him? You know, with obviously Samus and Ridley and now Cloud with Sephiroth. Like, who was the yeah. one that told his ass to get over here in Smash? But, mm. yeah, as stated before, fantastic direct. We we had been screaming for, like, a minute. I don't remember anything right. from that entire Game Awards presentation because my mind was shut off for, like, a solid 10, 15 minutes, I think, before I actually got back into whatever the Game Awards well, had. Well, let, let me put it this way for those that have, have not seen our streams for that event. Pretty much the way I'll put it is this. We started off happy, and then we ended off pissed off. I think we started off happy, and then we be slowly became indifferent. Then we oh no, we were pissed off, off because the last yeah, of exactly. us won everything. Which well, yeah, stupid. that's why we wound yeah. up pissed off. 
Yep. God damn, man. Genshin Impact was robbed. Uh, the Last of Us snubbed so many awards, awards that deserve to have gotten to other studios, honestly. Like, you know, yeah, Animal Crossing was robbed the game of the year because, genuinely speaking, chat, when you think of the year 2020 in video gaming, I don't think there's a better game that represents a way of connection with people in the world now than with Animal Crossing New Horizons. There has never been another game this year that can connect people together in such a way like this. That and Among oh, Us. Oh, that's you know. right. They did. <laughs> but Among yeah. Us was 2017. Actually, you, you, so. actually, you know what's ironic? You know what's mm-hmm. ironic? Um, fucking, even though Last of Us won the um, the uh, video game uh, game of the year award, the, the irony is that fucking, it didn't even win Player's Voice Award. No, that went to fucking Ghost yeah, of Tsushima. Yeah, because Ghost of Tsushima, I think, that deserved it. That yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I'm pointing that out, because that came from our voice. That came from the opinion of the people. So you would think, oh, Game of the Year, game, game of the year Award. Uh, nope. to, to clarify nope. on that mm-hmm. as well, from what I'm told, 90% of the votes tend to go from the reviewer's side, and 10% is the player's voice. So the people voting... So the people voting only get 10% of the 100% That's of the fucked. vote count. What? That's the reviewers fucked. get the 90% and they're the ones that dictate the big change as to where that that I disagree But that's with. what they went with. That they, they literally stated it in their statement regarding how the voting works and game of the year stuff. So That's fucked. Then, then why would you call then wait a minute. Then why would you call the player's voice? No, no, voice the player's voice that that was 100% the people i'm talking about the game of the year award that only what uh, that only applied 10 percent of the uh of the 100 percent that went down for the voting process so uh, if, so so well, if 100 percent of the people now, 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 went to say uh doom eternal that technically only means 10 percent went to doom eternal in the overall grand scheme right. of things yeah That's wow dude uh, I I definitely agree with you, KG, on Animal Crossing. That's the, literally the only thing I can talk about because I haven't played any of the other other games. Um, it got me through the pandemic, and it got through even a lot of my friends that I never, I didn't even know they had switches, came out of the woodwork to ask me, "Hey, do you have? Do you know? Have you played Animal Crossing yet? Like, oh, I just got it. Like, it's one of my first games. Like, and, and we had a lot of fun." Um, so I think it really did bring people together and also sorry I was gone for so long I had to put Tabasco sauce on my potato chips because I needed to clear my throat and it's working oh that sounds Tabasco important. sauce <laughs> um, also, also Tabasco sauce is the hot sauce to clear okay yeah. also, also having The Last of Us 2 win you know, makes me think about the Korean guy who freaking cut up the disc live on stream. Oh, that video is that video is legendary. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's that's exactly what if 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 you wanted if you wanted my my take on the award show as a whole, just go to that video. That's what I think of it. <laughs> yeah, I that I don't like that. I that, very it was very it was very underwhelming. Yeah, games that should have won didn't even win. Games that yeah. deserve to win didn't even win. I mean, some of the like Hades. I mean, Hades looked really fucking good. I think I only won like one award. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and by the way, that that's a company that cares for its you know producers and its developers Develop. and all that. Yeah, yeah. And that only won yeah. maybe just one award, and that that bummed me out because there are people who straight up say even for an indie game, that game deserves to be recognized by fans. If you if you love crazy combat and all that jazz, give Hades a try. People really mm-hmm. rave about it, and for good reason. It's one of those titles that looks kind of weird at first, but genuinely makes a big splash the moment you take your time to play it. So, yeah, it really sucks. Yeah, and, and if you look, and if you look at the Steam reviews for that specific game, most of them are either nine out of ten, ten out of ten is like some of the best. One of the uh, the storytelling is good, and the gameplay yeah. is great. So yeah, yeah, it really sucks to see like games that deserve it aren't getting it because oh, fucking under underhanded decisions were made that 
that we can't control. It's it's very shit. Also, shitty. let's like, take a second to like also talk about one other highlight from this presentation: the definitive factor as to why crunch time really means jack shit. The lady in the window. Oh yeah, the lady <laughs> in the window. The lady, uh, in the window. the lady in the window. She's like, can you please? Let me <laughs> well, well, you do extra hours no, for no, free. No. <laughs> no, no. What about what? What about what? What about what about that one commercial that I said? You know, shouldn't have drunk the uh, local. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but poor lady, man. I, if that doesn't just tell you how how things are in twenty twenty, man, then uh, it's really sad. I do have to go back and watch this Game Awards again to really recollect all of the things. Do I you watched. really want to though? No, I don't want to. I'm just like I yeah. After Sephiroth and Whooper, my brain was like, We're yeah, the whoop, yeah, the Whooper shit going on. And just see the really, Whooper they on the showed bottom, off on the bottom they third. Sh- they showed off a lot Four of games third. too, which is sad. They showed off a lot of games this year because I guess because of the absence of E3. No E3 means well, we can start you know checking all these game trailers yeah, somewhere. So, and they, yeah, that's you know, what obviously the family like. man himself, Vin Diesel, in oh, Arc yeah. Two. Yeah, Vin Diesel. yeah Vin, Vin Diesel in a fucking game. Like and, that. Oh, by the way, yeah, that comment in that a trailer was shit. That was that was that was that was that was some of the worst fluid fluidity I've ever seen. Yeah, that was, in a video. That, was, yeah. That, was that combat was horrible. It was like watching I mean, a kid. It was like watching a kid jam action figures together. That's like that's like watching a modern day Virtua Fighter. Pew, that's, how, that's how that's how that's how fucking like badly choreographed uh choreographed the yeah you don't feel um, the impact the, and and then the gushers blood as well oh the gushers blood oh god no oh my god that was, I was the like trailer. am i watching am i watching a game trailer or a fucking fruit gushers commercial? Like, <laughs> yeah humans are made out of gushers don't you know but another mm-hmm. thing you know I mean, I guess an- another highlight I'd say is once again from the beginning, uh, the Perfect Dark trailer. Oh yeah, the Perfect well, Dark trailer didn't even high. look like a, didn't even look like a fucking Perfect Until Dark until the very end. Yeah. Until the well, fucking title. When you like, saw the logo that said Perfect Dark. He's <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Once we realized that, that it's based on that, I was like, okay, you have my attention. I hope it succeeds. But man, you got a lot to live up to because Perfect Dark is that iconic for many fans, especially on the Nintendo 64, man. Uh, whoo, there's a reason why that game is so beloved. I love Perfect Dark on the N64, and I, I would hope that uh, the people working on this title know that they have a lot on their hands to go with, with this one. A lot resting on their shoulders. So let, let's hope that they succeed with this um but yeah aside from that i don't remember much else i think the swedish chef was there too he's in uh, overcooked yeah. exactly thank you swedish chef <laughs> <laughs> i mean there were a few highlights for me personally like for example that left for dead uh like game was pretty damn good. <laughs> and of course the new among us map Looks huge. And I'm oh yeah, that when happens. that comes out. Ooh, I'm yeah. so looking forward to that, man. That that looks hype as hell. Yeah, the the, the yeah yeah the the zombie game that is made by Turtle Studio Turtle Rock Studios. I think we got some Christmas suits for Fall Guys. Back for too, Blood. Right? Yes, yeah, right. That's right. Back yeah, we did. Blood. We did. Yeah, we got some Christmas stuff for Fall Guys. It looks that, good. That looks ooh, nice. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah ooh, the ooh, most wonderful ooh, time ooh. of the year. A lot of DLCA <laughs> shit in that goddamn uh, presentation, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got some good, we got some mu- good music renditions. Like I remember the the freaking Doom slash uh, Animal Crossing fucking. <laughs> that transition was good. Yeah. Oh yeah, the great. orchestra playing during the game of the year. <laughs> how do how do you go from? Yeah. I always do. Well, I mean, it only made sense you put Doom and Animal Crossing together because those were the pioneers that really kicked things off for 2020. Let, let it be known that Doom and Animal Crossing are like brothers and sisters to each other. It, I, I always loved the fan art that came out of it. Fantastic. Great, great times, though. Both. Doom. Yeah, the, no, the Doom guy needs to be in Smash. Yeah. Oh, man. Sure. I, I hope he Love comes in just fight. rips Ridley's guts or some shit like that. <laughs> just. Or <laughs> Bowser. <laughs> just said. No, fi- no, final, final, final smash would be like a freaking like ripping off. 
<laughs> somehow it's still rated T for like, teen. Like, like, yeah, like like yeah. So you would have like yeah. So you have you would have like freaking Doom guy doing a glory kill. I I do genuinely <laughs> believe though. As stupid he as would, this he sounds, would down below, rip it up and punch somebody in the face. Yeah, that, are you okay? <laughs> But I'm like I'm mentioning, I do genuinely believe that the final or one of the final characters joining in this event is probably gonna be none other than um than Master Chief himself, as silly as that sounds. I do genuinely believe Master Chief is gonna be among the many that are gonna be joining uh the Smash family sometime in the future. Especially with the connection between Nintendo and Microsoft lately. Actually I have a qu- I have a question I have a uh-huh. question about that. In the scenario in the scenario that he does join um, and I'm only asking this because I kind of forgot the difference. Um, would he be considered third party or second party? Third party. Uh, third party. It's third, third party, party from a first. Okay. From uh, yeah, from a com- from a video gaming company. So like. Uh, yeah. yeah. But Bungie doesn't yeah, it's own Microsoft anymore, Studios do they? that owns him. Microsoft. A second yeah. party is something yep. that is another studio that still belongs to the main company itself. Now. Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. So the second party would be like Pokemon or yeah, Game Freak. Yeah. Okay. Game now, Freak. Yeah. Mono. Now the reason I bring that up real quick is because I was kind of looking at the, I was kind of looking at the pattern. Basically, just the DLC characters we've gotten so far, and I've kind of like noticed the <clears> pattern where it's, well, I think the first one is obviously the first party, and then I think it's the third party, and then we get into the, um, the Western beloved Western character. Then we get into the whole um, controversial s- slot or whatever. So, and the next one, I remember correctly from the image, was that the next one. Now, granted, I could be full of shit and that this, <laughs> you know, this order is incorrect or it doesn't matter. But if um, if the order is to be correct, the next one would be, you know, a beloved Western character. Um, and there's pretty good, pretty good amount of choices for who that could be. Now. Not gonna mention my bias pick just for the sake of it, but I think Doom Guy is definitely one of those um, picks I, you know, I'd like to see, or maybe, or maybe even Dante for fuck's sake. Duke Nukem, <laughs> can Duke Nukem imagine? Duke I mean, Nukem. Took I, him I, forever. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thirteen years to release a fucking let, let game. That show, yeah, let go. that be the symbol of just because the game takes a while with its delay doesn't necessarily mean it'll be good. Because sometimes there is such a thing as too much of a delay. I'm here to smash characters and chew bubblegum. And I'm all out. Uh, uh, Clint Clint from LGR has to be the voice for that one in the the trailer. Listen, (laughs) if we get that Duke Nukem song in Smash, though, let's be real here. That shit would be badass. Even as a me costume. Oh, if they do that shit as a me costume, though, I think that will be GOAT. Yeah, I I can imagine what happens. Okay. We get we get Doom Guy and Smash, and then we get Duke Nukem's costume as a me costume. And uh, and it has to With include the, Duke no, Nukem's exactly. song, though. Didn't Steve come out before Sephiroth? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 I heard yeah. a lot of people keep saying, "Yeah, Sephiroth was cool and all, but he didn't break the internet." Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you got to remember, Steve is more iconic than Sephiroth. As silly as that sounds. Well, as as of as of this time period, back then Sephiroth was the, the yeah. Shit. When, when you think of yeah, Sephiroth, yeah, exactly. you think of the anime swordsman, and not many people watch anime, so that's why mm. compared to Steve, who is the video game character yeah. right now, yeah. You know, so that that's mm. why Steve broke the internet. It, it, it catered to yeah. young and all audiences. You yeah. know, there's a lot of people I still see currently from reactions and shit where they don't even know who the fuck Sephiroth <laughs> is, and even got mad that Sephiroth really? got into Smash and not Jonesy from Fortnite. You know, uh, so yeah, let, let that just show you the age demographic really makes such a big difference because everybody knows what a Minecraft is, but not everybody knows what the hell a Sephi roof is. So I, you know, <laughs> ah man, I hate. I hate oh, those people need to be educated. I hate the young people. <laughs> I hate them young ones. Back in my day, we weren't as cringe. <laughs> right. Back in my day, we didn't even use day, cringe. We Right, we weren't as cringe. Back, back <laughs> my day, you can go down to the corner. You can go down to the corner game store and buy Japanese games. You can buy fucking Pepsi Man. <laughs> oh, 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 this generation was based. I was Our childhood was lit as fuck. 
<laughs> it's pog, which I unashamedly use now. Aw, uh, the poly pog. I blame the Annie Boop Boopers. <laughs> poly -pog. You, know, you know what's funny? We're known as the boomers of the Annie Poop Tubers. Probably because we're older. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all no, no, no. You guys are old sons of bitches. Yeah, but why. hey, listen, I will <laughs> gladly take that title of being a boomer. I, I'd rather be, be that than a Gen Z. I'm just saying. Damn. Do you do you want to be tied to that though, Tyrone? <laughs> Pokemon Z. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Ooh. That's why. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Go ahead, Polly. Oh, I was gonna say Tyrone, do the do the uh, the young people. I love the young people. <laughs> How many times must we tell <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Bran Flakes. What a nice what cereal nice box. <laughs> 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 you must really love that episode. I I have to I have to infiltrate with SpongeBob at some point. Is it really complete if we don't ever include SpongeBob in something Pokepod related? No. Oh no, of course. It wouldn't oh, be because Pokemon. I was before that. <laughs> I don't want to be <laughs> Actually, Kevin, we got a question before yes. we move on. Um the good the our good old friend the media man, which by the way, hello. Um media man. He, he says, um well he tagged Kevin and Polly, but I assume this is for all of us. For all of us he asks where where are you guys' number one pick? For Smash Ooh. Um, uh, I'll go I'll go last because I'm pretty obvious. Yeah, I'm just gonna go down the list here. He wants Rayman. I'm just kidding. <laughs> go ahead. Wait, are we talking like the most recent game? Because I don't I don't play. No, you can pick any character. You can, you pick, want. You can pick anyone you want. As long matter. as they are a video game character. I I only want one character because I feel like he was snubbed and he's the only character that I feel should be in Smash that isn't in Smash and that's Rex. So I was going to say yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Put my boy in. I don't want him to be a me costume anymore. I'm sick and tired of it. Yeah, just like you changed your me your icon on your switch from Brock to um, when when is my boy Rayman gonna be in or Shadow? I mean, come <laughs> that, on, man. That was disrespectful. <laughs> Fucking Rayman. TSS, who do you want? Well, this, well, at this point, I'll be happy with with someone like um, Doom Guy, or I still want I I still low key want Jibanyan. I think a lot of people still do, actually. There, there's a hot in Japan in particular. He is a video game. I, I, I want Jibanyan versus Pikachu now. Yeah, he is a he is a fucking video. He game was character. the mascot for Japan at a certain point. Well, not the mascot, but he was a very, very beloved character at a certain. A point. A lot of people will get mad at me because he's another anime sword fighter, but I want Chrono in the game. Chrono from Chrono Trigger. Another square. S Chrono Trigger is way too <laughs> fucking iconic. Not put in Smash in some way, shape, or form. Don't worry, he'll be there as a spirit. <sighs> Damn, I, I gotta do him like that. Hey, he, he said, you know, in any sort. So I mean, I, I. It was either that or it was either Chrono or Classic Sonic. But wouldn't that just be a skin? No, no, like just Classic Sonic can have different moves than uh, uh, modern Sonic. He can have like um. Yeah, he's got like the spin, the bad neck bounce. He's mm. got like the super peel out move. He can use the elemental shields. Like they can figure it out. Kevin, spin. what about you? Uh, any character in Smash, man? There, I have way too many characters I'd love to see in. But I, I'm still rooting for a character from the mobile franchise, man. We we still need some love. Actually, Savion, you're you're right. Give like Eggman would actually. Oh, his be so fucking cool because they would use the E G G M A N. Oh, so, but <laughs> it's gonna be a smash remix though. Let, let. I've come to make an announcement. Shadow the Hedgehog. Is <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my fucking wife. That's why he came to Smash Brothers and pissed on my fucking wife. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, uh, in regards to my character, though, I'd say I, I need some representation for the mobile games because uh, there is a lack of mobile game representation. And mobile games in this current era right now is at its peak. So I only feel appropriate that we would have to include somebody from Psy Games because I think Psy Games became sort of the face for mobile games in this era. So probably Catalina from Ooh, Grand Blue Fantasy 
or uh, Yudin from uh, Dragalia Lost. You know, one of the two. I think that they just feel like okay. they would make the most sense to represent uh, the mobile side of the world. And given that uh, Psy Games and Nintendo have been collaborating with each other lately, especially in the in the Dragalia Lost mobile game, uh, it just only feels right to just include some representation for Psy Games, especially after the success of uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Ver Versus, which, by the way, they included my best girl in there, UL. I'm so happy she's in there with Sosia, and oh my god, they just look so beautiful together. It, it, mm. Okay, hi, Prof. How about this? Maybe not real like Rillaboom. I get why you're putting in because you know starter. But how about Zarud? I mean, why not? I I just don't think there should be a Pokemon. Honestly, I don't even no. think Incineroar should be added to the game. I mean, but we don't have any Gen Eight representation at all. Yeah, but we don't have yeah, a Gen have Three Gen representation. representation oh, we got Gen Five representation. We got the uh, the Reshram and Zeron stage. It was in Gen Three. Yeah, there's nothing but Gen Three at all. Yeah, Gen 3's got nothing. They I'm got some waiting remixes. for my boy Sceptile to get in, goddammit. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think Pokemon should be like... Ball guys in me costume. And every <laughs> single game needs to be represented. I don't, I don't think I mean, it's that big. Genshin Impact deal. for Smash. Listen, Genshin is not that I, I big. Would, I would rather Actually, I would be hype if Genshin Impact made it in this Smash. Uh, yeah, but I, don't, I, I won't like it because it'll be the generic main protagonist, and I'd rather prefer some of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a lot better characters. Nah, 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 nah. One check herself, though. Oh, but we, do get, we would get that soundtrack, though. That do -do 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 yeah, put Lisa in the Guy Luke and Smash, bro. I want, I want Shinji Miyazaki <laughs> to be <a> Smash. <laughs> what? Uh, is uh, well, is that, that why much. Shinji left the goddamn studio? Is because he's working on his Smash move set and shit for the game itself? Exactly. <laughs> well, got, well, then he might be on that. He might be on that web smash or the, the download. Like he's gonna be on mo thing. moose. What, what is that oh, called? Is moose? it like when? Is it like when Miyamoto was fighting Reggie? Yes, we're gonna get that shit. <laughs> That's exactly. Uh, it it kind of is sad when you see that shit and realize both of them are no longer there. You know, Nintendo no more. Yeah, they they really were the peak of Nintendo, man. Uh, but yeah, so we'll we'll see what happens. I'm still hoping to see something uh, from mobile games soon. As you can see, everybody else has their own representation as who they like to see. Whether both in the joke side of things or actual legitimate stuff and whatnot, uh, it, it's still something exciting. We only have three characters left, though. I mean, I don't have to. I mean, I might as well make make my submission. Although I feel like ninety percent and pretty much everyone in this call pretty much knows who I'm going to say. But just yes. an obligation. Um, obviously, I want my boy. I want my boy Crash, and reasons are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, I think you put him in. And you would bring back the, <clears throat> I know it wasn't like a big, I mean, it kind of was at the time, but imagine having a game with all three, Mario, Sonic, and Crash, just to bring back that time in the 90s. And also, you know, wouldn't it be great if his introduction to the, you know, his Smash trailer just ends up being a recreation of that commercial? Hey, Papa Man, Mustache Man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your oh stuff. Boy. I would die. Yeah, no, it has to be like a real live trailer. Like, it's not any CGI shit. No, it's everybody in their costumes. It, it, it was live like action. a live action yeah. shit. I would love that. I, it'd be unique. So I'd, be, I'd be happy for it. But no, um, in all seriousness, I'd definitely like to see him in the game. Um, I think he's just too iconic from the one of the iconic characters from the West Coast scene to not Honestly, have Honestly, the Game Awards would have been the perfect time to have introduced him, and I'm very disappointed they did. Uh, I kind of... I kind of... Disagree. I only say that because Man, Crash I, I Man was could... always there every year, you know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, but the but the reason I'm doing that, or the reason I'm saying that, is because um, you know, there there was that whole thing about the quote unquote leaked document of the five year plan, and if that plan is to be true, which so far it kind of has been, um, the plan is for him, the plan is for him to be in. Is next there year. anybody now, else whatever, in that now, list? What? What well, do you mean, in that doc that whole document that you're talking about? <laughs> well, no, what? Well, no, because there was like the um, the game, like the first game, which was the remake, which came true, and then there was a follow up. Um, and there was like a follow up uh, spin off game, which turned out to be Team Racing, the remake, and then there was another new game in the entry, which turned out to be Crash Four, solid game, uh, the okay. mobile game. Yeah, and then there's the mobile game, which 
I've been beta testing, and it's going to come out official in March. Yeah. And then there's a PvP game, but we don't know any don't know any actual details for that at the moment. Um, but so far, it's been it's been legitimate. But I'm just gonna I'm just not gonna give it a hundred an hundred ten percent satisfaction or guarantee <clears throat> until it actually happens because we've been through that too many times where we think it's gonna happen and then <laughs> it doesn't. So I, I I think he'll be in, but I think he'll be like the one of the last two slots. I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll be the next one. Understandably so, mm-hmm. but we'll see soon enough when that time arrives. So, uh, yep, I'll be waiting. Yeah, we're all gonna I... wait patiently. Who knows? Maybe in the next Smash Direct in a few days, we'll get the next ALC fighter, or maybe the final three because yeah. he's, I, I, it, it's gonna be a while. So, um, <clears throat> I know like we have to get into the episode review soon, but I kind of for my submission at yeah, least a real one I assume uh, I kind of <laughs> cheated. My real one, but I kind of cheated and I texted my brother, Brother World, and <laughs> Brother World. Brother, brother World is a big Smash guy, so he said for Zelda, Girahim is that is how, how you pronounce it or Skull Kid. Skull um, Kid, real? Okay. Yo, actually, okay. a lot of people want Skull I, Kid. That's a pretty interesting choice. Yeah, yeah. Skull Kids is a pretty yeah. interesting. He choice. said also Shantae or Shovel Knight. Whoever those oh, it, so Knight, unfortunately, is Zelda is such a big series, but like other than like these Link incarnations, we haven't gotten like a brand new character in a long time, really. I mean, they split this? Zelda and, and Sheik in Smash 4, and that was like the Zelda character, quote unquote, for Smash 4. And then they brought back young Link in this game, but like they haven't actually introduced a new Zelda character since Brawl, which is crazy. I heard, I heard Sidon, Sidon's pretty popular. From Breath of the Wild. Oh, well, it's very oh, popular yeah, in the fanfic side of things. I'm going to say that right now. And honestly, though, yeah, yeah, maybe not for the right reasons. Honda Toru for Smash. Mm-hmm. Mm, yes. I, I do yes. agree with that one. <laughs> I do agree with it too. Uh, Klonoa as right. well is another great. Yeah, there, there's a lot. But sadly, only three could make it. And let's see who those three are relatively soon. Yes. I'm still saying Agumon's going to be the next one, though. I'm just saying. At this point, we need Digimon <laughs> representation. <laughs> And I don't think Pokemon and Nintendo and shit are going to start bickering about Digimon being in Smash. Because technically the beef is between Pokemon and Digimon. Not Digimon with Nintendo, you know what I mean? Nintendo. Yeah. We'll find out soon enough. I'm just saying, it's definitely going to be Agumon next. I feel like we need representation for the Tamagotchi series. <laughs> and who, who better than to represent that than the uh, little one himself, Agumon. Although that that means I'm gonna get wait wait wait, wait a minute you you said Tamagotchi what you want Mamechi what the fuck like, what the fuck did I say that yeah you said you said you said Tamagotchi oh. you said Tamagotchi instead of Digimon <laughs> no no because uh no 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 to Digimon's like they started off as like a Tamagotchi yeah. game oh, yeah no, the yeah. virtual yeah. Pets. Yeah, yeah, the well, little yeah the little I'm just saying let, let's get yeah. some representation on that you know. Uh, but anyway, aside from that, though, are you guys ready to get into the review for the week? Yay. Mm. All Let's right, then, it. everybody. Spin the fucking ball. This is it, ladies and gents. The final episode review for 2020. And it is a sad one to think about because that means we're not going to get a new episode until 2021. And what better way that they went out with for the year 2020 than with ending things off with a character that has absolutely no development whatsoever in the series. And maybe this is her starting point. This episode here, Koharu's episode, focusing on her and this so-called mysterious Eevee. Let's get right into it. Some people are already saying best Kohado episode. Well, I mean, that's not hard to really say because there wasn't really that much of Kohado episode. I'm going to straight up say this now. I hope this isn't bad or already people hinting at something, but uh, I'm going to save my opinion for last with this one. Okay. I'm just going to say that I have a couple of words I have to say for this episode, but I really yeah. would love to hear from everybody else. And uh, obviously, since we got a big crowd for tonight, let's start passing things around. I'm going to start things off with... Uh, 
with Richie here. Let, let me hear things from your end, Richie. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, we're we're gonna <laughs> shif- we're gonna shuffle shit around this time. Uh, it's unexpected outcomes, you could say. Uh, Richie, let me begin with you. I'd love to hear your opinion first regarding the uh, the Chloe episode or Kohado episode, however you want to call it, because I don't know what the hell fans really want her to be called. I'm gonna call it Koharu because I think that because I think that's just the preferable name in my opinion. Okay, so take it away, buddy. I'll pass this one to you. Uh, okay. Well, just a little disclaimer. I won't have much to say. Not because I didn't enjoy the episode or whatever. Um, it's just that obviously, you know, even though I watched the entire episode, I never have much to say. But what I will say is that this is definitely a nice. This is definitely a nice you know, Koharu development episode for the, for the girl. And I think this is one of their, I think the method of them slowly phasing her in into the trio, which is, which will now be a trio um, is definitely coming full force as if it wasn't obvious already. Um, Cause I know a lot of people were just were begging for her to be part of the, of the main gang. So it could be like a free man thing, but I feel like this kind of approach, um, while it could have been better, um, I definitely like it this way and not just straight up because I want for her to actually develop away from the whole indifferent to Pokemon um, because I feel like it would have been a little more trickier considering the way that Journeys has been as far as like how they would handle that when she's part of the officially part of the group compared to just um, compared to just doing it from the sides. Um, the whole Eevee thing, I mean, I'm. I'm a little bit indifferent about it because obviously we all know we all know the rules here. Uh, the the girl, well, one of the girls, because you know Sun and Moon have like three girls and only one of them got it. Um, but obviously the, the the main tradition is to give the girl um, the Eevee. Now the first one was Sylveon. The other one had like a unique haircut, and the third one, which is the one we're dealing with, is just a regular Eevee. But except if I remember correctly, um, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's Dynamax cap- capability, right? Well, the gimmick is mainly that it can't evolve. Yeah, yeah we don't it, know yet. It's more like it, it's it more it's more like it has the ability the, has the traits of the Let's Go EV one. Uh, the- I'll hold okay. you on that right there for that one. That EV, I believe. Okay, so that EV obviously can't evolve because game mechanics. But narratively, if you try to evolve Let's Go EV, it gets mad at you at even the thought of it. Mm-hmm. So right. that one, like in story wise, it can't evolve because it doesn't want to. Mechanically, coding wise, it can't because it's not programmed oh, cool. to evolve. This Eevee has a whole different story altogether, which I like. I like that they juggle with the with, with different kinds right. of. Hey, Richie, let's... it's your turn, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I don't have much to say about it. The only, ironically, the only kind of. The only few comments I ever had for the episode is that, you know, they did a very nice job, I feel like, um, with how they kind of phased her in into the group. Because I feel like with the way that everything's been going, I feel like this was kind of their, not necessarily the best play, but I felt like it was very, it was pretty adequate. And I definitely, you know, like the fact that, you know, she kind of had to slowly real, slowly get out of that phase of being being indifferent to to you know the whole idea of catching Pokemon and being a trainer, and I mean we saw a glimpse of that went a little bit where you know she fought the the Gengar with uh, Yamper, so I feel like this was more how do I say it more a more solidified version of that with the but the, but the only difference is that this time around she actually you know you know she finally got around to realizing oh maybe this trainer stuff isn't that bad. Uh, mm. You know, when we catch the Eevee. So, mm. not very much to say. Um, it was a nice episode. Um, just to kind of give it a quick rating, I give it a um, a 7 out of 10. I thought it was an enjoyable episode. Um, but it won't be something you like, would miss if you skip it, I believe. Um, I mean, it's I mean obviously, you would miss it. No, no. Skip realistically. No, no, you wouldn't. You, I don't know because some people would just skip it because it's like, oh, not major uh, event. Nice uh, technically, it is, but we'll get to that. Oh no, no, listen, I don't. This, I'm not saying that there isn't, but some people would probably use that excuse, and I'm like, well, you could do that, but you would also miss out, obviously, of someone capturing the Pokemon and mm-hmm. you know actually going through like a a character development uh, mm-hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. So I know it wasn't much. 
but I didn't really have too much thoughts onto it. But I thought it was a very nice episode overall. And I thought some of the things they handled in this one were pretty good. So that's okay. it. All righty then. So let's Who's go and that? pass this on to the next person. What about you, John? Well, let's pass this one on to you, buddy. All right. So I am definitely in the minority when I say that I think one of the things that Journeys has handled the best has actually been this kind of background development of Koharu. I know a lot of people say, no, because she's not even really a main character. I mean, a lot of people are frustrated with Koharu's progression, but personally, I kind of like that they spaced it out the way they did to focus more on Ash and Go during this first year. And I think that this is one of the few episodes of Journeys, if not the only episode, where everything kind of feels completely earned. Like every single right. uh, emotional moment is like, oh, I felt that because this has been a year's worth of buildup. And I think that in that respect, it was executed wonderfully. Uh, I also think this episode had fantastic usage of both the artwork and the music i loved like whenever there was a an, a moment between kuharu and evie that like the background would get like all colorful or bright or something like that you could tell it was like hey this is an important moment guys here pay it pay attention so that was very nice uh i liked some of the loose continuity in this episode you had jesse trying to you know be an actress like you know she's done multiple times before and even the return of the pitfall i i actually really liked the return of the pitfall we haven't seen it so far in journeys i don't think maybe once we're talking was it was it in the was it in the the sobble episode not or even not even the pitfall the damn Vacuum. We we got class. This is OG Team Rocket. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I I really like Team Rocket in this episode. Also, I liked that Pelipper battled. I like that. You know, mm. with, with the Gotcha thing, it's like, oh, the Gotcha didn't work this time. I like when we see more Peko. I like when we see uh, Choodle. I like when we see Pelipper. And it's like, oh, we there are a few recurring Team Rocket Pokemon. It's almost here. like they're actually making a team. Yeah. yeah. So mm. I I did I did enjoy that as well. I also think that there was some. A nice subliminal go development in this episode where we learned that he made a promise to the teacher where he has to come back and take tests at least for the class and he's kind of like proud of himself for upholding that accomplishment i i liked that because it shows that hey you can go in our eventual pokemon you don't have to be a dropout like so many people have been saying about the art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always yeah. went to, went to school for right three now. Yeah, what, what 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 is your what is your education? Yeah, I went to I went to I, I melted my face and went to summer school for three years. I got a good education, <laughs> and we even got to see Go kind of like be like I, I guess a veteran on the schoolyard, so to speak. <laughs> quote unquote, like, you know, veteran. He's the one with yeah, quote unquote veteran because it's like you know he's the one with the Cinderace and he's taking charge beating the battle against Team Rocket and whatnot. I, I did like that out of Go. I think that most of the time I agree with Tyrone where I don't like the Go development episodes because they have to backseat Ash and make him look super incompetent. But here it worked, I thought. I thought it was just a good setting at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only real negative that I have to say about this episode is that there was a kind of a lack of context for the the ev group and their lab and stuff like i i didn't know like oh where is this lab at like like i get the the sense that it's across the street from where professor sakuragi is because like yomper just ends up there inexplicably and it's like okay well oh, they're, they're they're right there i guess yeah. so uh i i was kind of expecting oh, like something that back. important to have more okay. time dedicated to it and i guess the the people themselves i i for the first half of the episode i was like oh these are some bad guys they out here with a net chasing this eevee which i guess was part of the comedy at first but you know for me i was like oh man that's this seems kind of serious i think they should give some more development some more spotlight to these guys but it, towards the end we learn it's just a bit it's just a gag and we're like oh ha ha, ha funny so i'll forgive that part anyway but um honestly like i said i think the payoff was very good and i'm I'm excited to see what the future holds for Koharu slash Chloe. I think that things are moving in the right direction for not only her, but also Ash and Go. And this episode demonstrated that. So I'm going to give this a solid 9 out of 10. I'm going to say this is easily a top 5 episode of Journeys, in my opinion. Okay. Um, since since KG isn't here to, to pass the torch, I'll go. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this episode was, well, not only, the, not only the, the structure of it, the fact of the matter that 
I, I liked the interaction between um, Go and Kohado at the very beginning um, when Go was asking Kohado, uh, why don't you catch Pokemon? And it's like, um, it's because of my, it's because, you know, because my father is a researcher and I really don't think I need one and all that stuff. I really liked that little um, bonding moment as, uh, as they were walking to school. I really liked that. Um, the whole um, showing off the evolutions at this point, better late than never. Um, Eevee having the Let's Go design is pretty cool, but I'm pretty sure it's going to end up as a Dynamax one, considering that it's not evolving. I did like, I did like the fact that you, you that the sound effects when you when they tried to when when the um, the lab workers tried to tried to uh, get Eevee to evolve. Also, Eevee imitating all of the all of the evolutions. I thought that was pretty slick. Sylveon's uh, was my favorite. I love yeah. that. that's because I love Sylveon. It's a diva ass Eevee. Yeah. Well, also, also, you could see that you could see that um, Evie, you know, tried to freaking, uh, you know, n you know, get get his floof, uh, you know, floof feathered up when when he was facing Yamper the first time, right? That was kind of funny, and also at the end of the episode as well, when I think it had it ha it has to have like um, Nekonote or freaking Helping Hand or some shit, um, not Helping Hand. What was what's the fucking move? Um, Somebody help me! What's the move Copycat? that what? What does it do? Well, you know, you know how um the the same move that um Haruka Skitty had. Assist. 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 Yeah, maybe it has assist or something like that. Maybe copycat. Oh, apparently, it does have copycat. Copycat or assist. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, to well, me, it's the same. Like it was just using its let's go moves, the sparky spark or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, God! I swear to God, if it uses fucking baddie bad, I'm out of here. I thought that's um, what it was doing. I thought it was using its. <laughs> move. I, I, thought oh, it was using its I thought it was using its let's go moves. Yeah, I thought so too. But um, getting getting to the meat and potatoes of the episode, I did like I, I did like the fact that they chased them into the school, and you know, Kohadu had to come out. You know, looking like you know, had to make had to make an excuse to come outside. Then you see the the magical moment where she gave that where she got her eyes eyes on the Eevee. You just see like everything. You know, the time stops, and like I said, having having the rockets. I know I know Zach pretty much like blasted that whole thing, but I did really like to see um the classic rocket gag come back at least one time. You know, with the as we mentioned, the hole, you know, the the hole in the ground, and also the vacuum. Why is this lady I, not looking at us? Because it wants to want, me, man. Fuck off. And and also and also that is the most jank ass Zubat I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> that's another that's <laughs> another story. Um, the whole the whole interaction in the um the playground though that was fun. Also also if you notice, I'm pretty sure the artists are intentionally um messing up the lip flaps on um go when he calls out cinderace because you could definitely tell that um the lip flaps were definitely off timed but i'm pretty sure that's because it's they're they're doing it off of the western timing as opposed to the japanese timing i've noticed that a lot in the last like 20 episodes um let's see did the researchers remind you of the ev brothers from the original series one of them definitely was um yuji Ueda. Yeah, the, the the hairstyle too. But one of them, but one of them, the the guy, the guy was definitely voiced by Yuji Ueda because, as I said before, um, hearing y Yuji Ueda in this anime series is like gift wrapping a hammer. You can kind of tell when what he's voicing because he vo sounds the damn same. Um, but aside, but aside from that, it was cool to see Eevee battle, um, the rockets. I liked, I liked the fact that the the you know, Gasha machine got stuck, and that's. You know, finally the gag, the gag that people hate freaking doesn't work. And then Pelipper has to battle and then it gets its ass kicked. Um, but overall, I want to say that the, uh, it was originally teetering between a 7, 8 and an 8, 1. I will give it an 8, 1 because of the ending and the reasoning and, and Kohado actually getting real development. Hopefully, hopefully, unlike Sun and Moon, hopefully they won't treat this one like shit. Also, the rockets you see there. Um... So, Musashi looks like Koharu, um, Kojiro looks like Go, and Nyarth looks like their mo lo looks like uh, I think Chloe's mother, or oh, sorry, uh, Koharu's mother, or freaking Go's mother. You look at the hair. By the way, nobody talks about that, so I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, the ending part when she caught it, I think that made the episode an eight one for me. It was a seven eight because at least at least I can give it credit for doing what it did. What it did. 
Um, some people ag would agree that it took way too long for Koharu to start development. But considering that they had to go through all this crap before, and also we had the Backstreet Boys, um, I'm willing to give them a pass here. If they don't treat this EV like shit, I will be happy. Because, you know, sad part is we had um, Haruka and freaking Serena had did something with their fucking EB while fucking, while fucking Sita and did absolutely jack shit. So I'm hoping that, um, Koharu does something with this EV and, um, and hey, get a, get a Dynamax EV. Sounds cool. So eight, one for this one. Um, go held himself well in this episode too. So, but I know this one is Koharu based and nice to see them back at school. Next. Yeah, I know, right? Stay in school. It's, uh... Should I go, or do you want to yeah. go, Tyrone? Go ahead, Polly. All right. So... Uh, Mornox, to... Mornox, um, you'll find out... I'll, I'll, I'll give you a spoiler. You'll find out in two weeks. Next. All um, right. Yeah, well, Polly, go to it, buddy. <laughs> okay. It's time for some hot take, boys. All right. <laughs> well, I thought this was a solid episode. Um... I've always said this before. I have my notes up. I've personally never been a fan of Evie's going to Poke Girls. Um, I always felt out like it was a cop out because it's a main mascot and it's cute. And I will always, always be a stickler for Pokemon native to the current generation's region winding up in the main character's team. Mm. Uh, like I, I had the same problem with May and Dawn, with Togekiss and 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 um, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. And Quilava, I, I know that it's it was meant to promote the games that were coming out at the time, but uh, I, I just love, I just always will love the the native Pokemon winding up on the on the team. Um, I also just never really cared like for Maze Maze Eevee slash Glaceon. I was always indifferent towards Serena's Sylveon, Sa uh, Sandy. I like its personality, but that's about it. But however, I was wrong about Koharu because, and it was that one line that did it for me in this episode, when that um, EV researcher said at the end, maybe this EV is just hesitant or unable to decide what path she, she should take. And I, I thought that was great because that shows the perfect symbolism between the, this EV and Koharu and not really knowing what she wants to do, if she wants to follow in her dad's footsteps. Um, and honestly, that's quite relatable. Um, and I think it's also why people love Eevee and the evolution so much, just because of all the choices and all the paths you can take. Um, so I really like that that symbolism there. Um, like John said, it, it really, it finally feels like she's becoming part of the squad. I just personally wish it happened a little sooner, but I understand the circumstances it took to get there. Um, I am going to be the odd man out here and say I did not like Team Rocket in this in this episode. My new phrase with journeys is 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 that it got jodoed, which means they sh they show up when when I feel like they just didn't really but I have to be. Was your favorite season? I, I know, but. But, but, but Jota happened. You know, there can only be one Jota. That's my argument. <laughs> anyway. I mean, also, even if it's your favorite series, there's still some things you can pick out of it that you didn't like. And unfortunately, oh, yeah. they, they picked the thing you didn't like, the too yeah. much Team Rocket. I also, with what John said before about the um, the two, the, the researchers not really being, like, fleshed out as much in the episode... It's like I would have taken either Team Rocket or them, and if I had a preference, yes. I would have picked them. Yes. That would have given more context. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All the words right um, out of my fucking mouth. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say is that uh, Ash was uh, was okay. I kind of don't like how he popped out of nowhere, but I, I honestly thought he was hilarious. I think my favorite part was that when he was giving commands from the bottom of the ditch, like when it's just to, you just see his arm pop out and he's pointing. He's like Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, I actually <laughs> have that awesome. frame in the in the review here because that 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 to me yeah. was my favorite scene in this episode. Yeah. Well, um, one last thing. I for some reason this is very random. I like the classroom scene. Because we don't, we never really get to see that. I think one of the few times we we have gotten that is in um, M20, and obviously that was like the nightmare scene. 
But um, it was cool seeing like an actual class full of, 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 of students um, working silently. I don't know, you just, you don't really see that in Pokemon too much. And I also like when Go, I thought it was a cute moment when Go uh, was like, oh, well, Ren Renji taught me this. Like he didn't know the answer at first on the test, but he's like, oh yeah, I studied this with uh, with Renji. So I thought that was, that was nice. I don't know. It lets you, know, it let you know that they're study buddies. Yeah. Mm. Um, so overall, I think I'd give this episode a seven. Yeah, solid episode. All right, Tyrone. All right. Um, I'll get through the pros first. This episode's cute. It's very cute. Uh, from Jolteon licking Flareon in the face and Eevee trying to copy all the other Eevees, especially Sylveons. I don't know. Like, Jolteon's my was one of my favorite Eeveons along with Umbreon, but Sylveon has this really special spot in my heart because I've always viewed as the diva of Eevees. So to see it like do the the strut and then Evie try to copy the strut and fall over was pretty was pretty adorable. And then it almost fucking drowned when it tried to copy Vaporeon and that shit was hilarious too. Um, but you know, um, there is another. What was the other thing I like? I liked the Renji moment, like you mentioned already. I like that Renji's like really confident about it too, like. Like, yeah, we studied this together. You'll be fine. I, and I like, it gives us some outside lore about what our heroes are doing outside of their usual Pokemon stuff. It's like, you know, Renji's helping him study. He, you know, the deal is that, and I think they have that deal in some schools where certain students are absent every day, but when they show up to test day, they ace the test. So you can't get mad at them. <laughs> they know their stuff. So that it's a, I love seeing this realistic turn. It makes Ash stick out like a sore fucking thumb, personally, because he was he was contrived in a universe where it was socially acceptable to leave home and start a Pokemon journey. Where Go and Koharu are still within this level of realism where they have to take on real world responsibilities as well as be immersed in the world of Pokemon. And the few the the earlier Koharu episodes did this a lot better because Koharu didn't have a Pokemon at the time. Pokemon wasn't even a main focal point of her life. Pokemon was just the thing she knew of from the outside looking in. Where here, Pokemon's more involved, and we're starting to see that bleed into it now. Apparently, if you're a kid and you have a, own a Pokemon, you have to leave it in this in, in this uh, playground, which. I like that idea. It makes sense. It's real. It, it, it obviously it's it's just like when you have um, it's just like when you have um, like a Game Boy or Pokemon cards and stuff. You got to put them away. You can't have them out in class, right? So they're, they're treating it the same, the same way, in the same sense. Um, but I used to hide my Tamagotchi under my desk. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and so you can't have like a live freaking animal in the middle of class. So they they put it in. They put it in the playground with all the others in like a daycare situation. I like that. Um, now to get into the things that bug me. Now this one, this particular problem I have isn't necessarily the episode's fault. It's more or less the stuff around the episode looking into the episode. Now TSS mentioned it before. There's an opening scene of Go and Koharu having a conversation with Go asking why he does, she doesn't have a Pokemon and Koharu makes the statement, I don't have to have a Pokemon. Now. This, uh, I've, I've always found it weirdly jarring when, when lines like that are written in an episode where we know the outcome. Now, this isn't the episode's fault. This is marketing's fault because marketing-wise, we know at the end of this episode, Koharu's going to have that Eevee. We know it because, one, it, it, the stand showed us. Two, the damn poster showed us. Three, the episode starts off, you know, showing off the Eevee. And the um the starting title. We know at the end of this, Koharu's going to have it. So to see that, all of that outside reference, and then start the episode with Go going, why ain't you got a Pokemon yet? <laughs> it just it's it's very weird. It's it's one of those weirdly like you ever seen uh I don't know if you guys remember Assassin's Creed. There was one of the Assassin's Creed games where the guy is uh, praising his son for how great of a assassin he's gonna be in the future. You know that motherfucker's gonna die. That's <laughs> it's dangerously obvious he's gonna die, and that's exactly kind of how this episode went. It's so focused on why don't you have a Pokemon, Koharu? 
So Kohara is going to catch a Pokemon this episode, basically. Like, it's, it's, it's a weird writing tactic. Because you know at the end she's going to catch it. But outside of that, um, I believe the other issue that I had personally, we don't need two Team Rockets. And I'm calling the scientists Team Rockets. They're not evil Team Rockets. They're just Team Rockets in the sense that you got a duo chasing after Eevee, you know, the, the Pokemon of focus. The scientists were the conflict. They are already the, the narratively established conflict. So with that said, we don't need Jesse and James here. Sorry about you. I like the idea that the gotcha machine broke and they had to use Pelipper because it shows that between Pelipper and Choodle, it looks like Team Rocket's going to build a team around water Pokemon, which is very interesting because Team Rocket used to use poison and grass type Pokemon. So I like that, but that could be saved for another episode. Like like the like a Team Rocket episode called Uh Oh Gotcha Broke or something like that. But not this episode. This was not their episode at all. I appreciate that they did their classic OG gags, the the pitfall and the vacuum cleaner, because those are two old, old schemes that they did back when they had little to no budget. <laughs> and no, I'm not making fun of the anime. Team Rocket literally makes statements about how much money they've had in universe. But they weren't needed in this episode. We already had an established conflict. If you needed to fill up more time, fill it up with Koharu and Eevee hiding in different places in the school, hiding out in the playground, dodging weird conflicts from accidentally angering Pokemon because Eevee's trying to copy them. Funny stuff. Stuff that would show that Koharu and Eevee belong together because other than uh, Koharu commanding Eevee to use copycat, I didn't see many scenes with Eevee outside of her hiding in the bushes with Eevee. If your job is to convince me that Koharu and Eevee are supposed to be together, I only got like two scenes for you. And that's about it. Now, I'm not saying the episode was bad, obviously. Like I stated before, it was cute. It was very it was an adorable episode. And I like the, um, the, the ideas that this episode has. Thematically, it's great. As an episode for Koharu, unfortunately, it, it's only falling flat because of the first part. Now, the second part does a really great job of saying that thematically, this EV fits because it's too hesitant on what it wants to be and thus can't commit. And it actually gives us a little bit of insight to how evolution works. Even mm -hmm. with an evolution stone, Pokemon doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to evolve when touching the stone. I mean, right. I mean that does question why Pikachu swacked the Thunderstone out of Ash's hand and uh, it didn't evolve when its tail hit the stone. But, <laughs> so I guess it answers that. Um, so the, it shows that a Pokemon can reject a form of evolution. So evolution has to be a mutual agreement between Pokemon and trainer, which I like that. I like that idea. That's a good idea. And it works for Koharu. Um, her catching a Pokemon was really good. And, you know, a lot of people are going to praise it. I wouldn't say necessarily, though, that that's made Koharu automatically better. Catching a Pokemon doesn't make you automatically a better character. It does help towards your development, though. But other than that, I did enjoy it. It was definitely a step up from the episodes I've been watching for a while now, with the exception of maybe the, what, the Squavit episode. So I enjoyed myself for some of the parts that were enjoyable. I just wish the scientists had had more. Uh, I wish the scientists had been front and center and just axed out Team Rocket. We don't, we didn't need them. We, we could have had their gotcha machine break in another episode and have that be the be the 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 focal that would have been a, that actually would have been a good idea like uh oh yeah the episode being titled uh oh gotcha broke or something like that but well, i just i just want to chime in here real quick and say how funny is it that i i don't know if anybody else had this feeling while watching the episode but to me i was like man team rockets in this episode too and then i realized it's been three episodes in a row that they've been in and i'm just <laughs> <used to it. laughs> like you know, I I had to deal with like you guys what, are overstaying your welcome. Get out of my screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You had to basically deal with six hundred episodes in a row of Team Rocket appearing over and over and over again throughout the original series until early best wishes, and now yeah. they're in three episodes in a row. I'm like, man, this is a lot. Now, oh, <laughs> I want to comment on. I, I want to comment on one more thing too here. So, go and Koharu take the spotlight in this episode. Ash's appearance in this episode was to bring to, uh, was to get the plot connected, I guess, weirdly, which they didn't need to. And their idea of increasing Go and Koharu's development, unfortunately, 
was yet again pushing back Ash, this time putting him in a hole. He's literally in a hole. He can't do anything because he's fucking, they had to put this motherfucker in a hole. You would have been better off just not having him be in this episode. And as we've seen from the series, Go can, Go can hold his own now. He can be in an episode without Ash. He's been in one without Ash. It's that Celebi one. So why is he, why is Ash here? What, Ash, weirdly enough, Ash and Team Rocket were the things that needed to leave. <laughs> and they're the oldest characters in the show. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been a great Journeys episode if the old team wasn't here. <laughs> but yeah, then I'll give it a, I'll give it a, I'll give it a seven. I'm... All right. Actually, I think you cut off at the All end. Right. Oh, I'm saying I'll give it a seven. So All right. Go ahead. All yours, Kevin. Cool boy. <laughs> no, you're a <laughs> cool boy. Oh, oh boy. No. Everyone, get your clown music ready. Start, no, start playing, start playing the actual <laughs> EV music. Hey, listen, I, I would, but I don't want to get copyrighted. Yeah. I don't like this episode. <laughs> this oh. episode, no, there was a reason why I didn't yeah, like this episode. Perfect. Hold on, hold on. Remember when KG broke Journey's arm that one time? <laughs> you, you know how close we were? You know how close we were to finally not being divided on an episode? <laughs> we were in the squad. Well, we came together yeah, the, in the squad episode. The episode. episode somehow got me good, and I, and it got everybody in the same page. To me, yeah, to me ahead, KG. I don't like this episode because when I watched it with the crew in, uh, in JPR's Discord a while ago during our Poke Watch, I noticed something. I felt like I seen this before. And guess what happened? We did see this before. This is the Lana and Evie episode. Oh, shit. This is for scene per scene, the Lana and Evie episode when Evie showed up. It is exact copy and paste format, just in a different setting. And with different oh, characters. Shit, right. Because some people here have not seen much of Sun and Moon or went through the history of Sun and Moon, many people might not realize that this is literally a scene per scene kind of episode that replicates the Sun and Moon's Eevee. But the big difference there is that Eevee in that one had a series leading up to his capture. Here, he just showed up in that one episode that he debuted in. And then was immediately caught in that said same episode. You go and watch the oh, Sunday shit. Moon Eevee episode when he actually appears in the show itself and joins Pop Leo. Guess how the episode format is like. Eevee meets Pop Leo. Pop Leo and Eevee escape from these uh, Pokemon that's trying to chase after them. They manage to escape. They find Lana. Lana sees Eevee. Eevee and Lana grow a small bond. Pop Leo goes against the opponent. Uh, which is Team Skull in the episode by itself at first, and then later hops out of Lana's hands to then join Poplio in the fight to then start being the one to give uh, the finishing blow to the opposing team. How does this episode work? Eevee meets the, uh, the Yamper. They both work together. They both run away from whatever they're running from, being those two characters, the scientists. They both manage to escape. They find Team Rocket. They're the villains of the week. So we see them. They're fighting uh, Team Rocket. But at first, who's fighting Team Rocket? Yamper by itself. Until eventually, Eevee came out of her hands to then fight alongside Yamper and work together to take out the said opposing team. And therefore, end the episode then and there with the capture. Similar format, just in a different setting with different characters in a different series. Play for play. It is Damn. a literal copy and paste, and I am surprised none of you actually mentioned any of that. Well, that would require me to watch And that's Sun and exactly Moon why I am mad, here man. to tell you guys this oh, is a literal a Sun and Moon episode. episode. I didn't even remember that episode. He's talking about episode Sun and Moon 99, and I just read the blurb, and yeah, that's what happened. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, just, all, I just didn't And that's why it. I said this, yeah, honestly, was not my favorite episode, only because 
There was no buildup for this EV. It just showed up. It just appeared, just happened to have a secret ability, which by the way, I'm just coming under the assumption that it probably pulled a rallet and swallowed an Everstone without realizing it. Uh, but we don't know that truth just yet, so we'll find out sooner or later. Um, but the thing is, this EV only appeared in this episode. That, that lady by in the background realizing <laughs> it's, it's like, the same. Son of like, <laughs> shit. Yeah, even in a different <laughs> setting, I still feel like there's still the same bullshit time and time again. Yeah, this episode is literally repeat for repeat. There was, there's been build up for the Eevee, but it's all been outside yeah, of the show. Yeah, but it still happened. At least you got... Because see, with the Sun and Moon stuff, you knew that it was happening, but you didn't know to who it was leading into. You didn't know who the character, who Evie was going to go to at that time. So seeing those I, episodes. I feel like that's the fundamental difference, KG, because so many people hated that Sun and Moon episode because so many people thought it was going to yeah. Ash and it didn't. But people thought this episode was great because that was never a part of the conversation. We knew who was catching the I Eevee know. from the start. And I feel like people didn't Yeah, get but the thing up. is, like, I agree on that part. And I think that made things a lot easier. But at the same time, doesn't that ruin the fun? Because the whole point about something is to speculate and kind of see where the direction of the series is intending to go. If you know about something a couple of weeks in advance, at that point, all you're just doing is just waiting for that moment to show up in the show. Rather than, oh, who is this Pokemon going to go to? For example, the Lucario and Cinderace stuff, they spoiled it in the opening. We all knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when and where was it going to happen. So that moment when those two Pokemon evolved in the same episode, everybody already had that set in mind, already knew it was going to happen. And when it happened, everybody was like, okay, I guess it happened. I mean, we knew yeah. where it was going to happen. It yeah. One that... It was only one, Yeah, and really. you saw it happen, and it did. And it's like, okay, well, I guess that happened. And, you know, there are things like this that I feel uh, was missing with this sort of episode. But the fact that it's a literal copy and paste of the Sun and Moon episode kind of is what told uh, threw me off. It's like, all you're doing is just reusing the same story, the same asset, the same gimmick, except with Koharu. And that's really it. And it, it's kind of like... Couldn't you have come up with a different scheme? The only difference with this Eevee is just that it doesn't evolve. It doesn't know what it wants to evolve to. It doesn't even know if it even will because it still has a goal and it's, you know, it, it needs to search for its own goal. And that's why I just didn't like it. I'm just like, okay, I guess that's a thing. But, you know... For Koharu, I still appreciate it. Like, now, uh, removing the Sun and Moon stuff out of the way, you know, uh, Koharu and Eevee, the, this whole episode, I do appreciate it. Because, finally, we got to see some Koharu-focused stuff. We got to see Koharu actually develop. We got to see Koharu, you know, think about what she actually wants to do and see how she can relate with the Eevee that she is attached to. Because both of these two characters, and it's been something that we, the audience, have been mentioning time and time again... What the hell does she want to be? And now the show establishes that in this as well. Both of these characters, both trainer and Pokemon, have no idea as to where they want to go and what they want to go to. And that now is going to be something that the next year is going to have to follow up on. So this is a good setup episode for both of these characters because it establishes a starting point for Koharu and for Eevee. And I hope that this is the starting point for good development for her. It's unfortunately, once again, one of those situations where we simply are going to have to wait and see. We're not going to get the answer right away. It is something that will come in due time amongst the other dozen of things that we are also waiting for as well to see if it will get some form. <laughs> so you see what I'm going at here? This is just, there's yeah. just so much of this shit happening over and over again. So basically, you're saying that Koharu go went, I don't have a job, I don't have a goal. And Evie's like, I don't have let's a goal. Be friends. And then they wound up, and, yeah, let's be friends. You want to get some drinks? Yeah. And they just, they, <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know hey, yet. You know, you and I, we, we have a lot of common. Yeah, I agree. Let, let, you know, let, let's be partners. Okay, capture again. I think yeah. we do. <laughs> I say? Eevee, there you go. And now Koharu has an Eevee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so th that's my thing. I like the Koharu episode. I still think it's great. I just don't like that it's 
literally copy and paste to the Lana and Evie episode. That that's my biggest complaint about it. And it shouldn't be. It deserved to have been. It, it, it's basically a remix of what that episode was. Except this time, the only difference was yeah. that that Evie in Sunny Moon at least had some time to grow or at least be on screen via the little small shorts. And uh, the ep- yeah, and then 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 they completely and then they completely threw it out, threw it away. Yeah, that's, that's true. <clears throat> but that could also apply to Kohara yeah, they- and Evie too. We don't know. I I don't think so. I don't think so because they still have to show Dynamax. But yeah, but that could be just one episode. And the only so far we only seen one Dynamax with Ash. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's well, that's one. That's actually that's actually one more episode than what fucking Nagisa got. Well, I think I think another thing is going back to what Tyrone said. I think this is during the Mewtwo episode where it's like, you know, we have so many half filled glasses right now. Mm-hmm. And we're just kind of expecting like, oh, Sun this moon will the off same way, by the way, in the future. Uh, that's yeah. I think, I'm going to set a moon I, good. I think Polly, I think Polly will get this reference. So remember that episode, remember the episode of SpongeBob where Barnacle Boy uh, orders the, uh, the adult meal. And he's like, that's too big, Barnacle Boy. You'll never finish it. That's Pokemon <laughs> Journeys to me right now. Article man. <laughs> but I'll take the You'll small deal. <laughs> I, I also want to point out that uh, the streak continues. This is the third straight episode since the Mewtwo thing that Go has not caught an episode in. Which oh I thought he's not going to get to that 800, 900 so, mark at all at this point. That's, that's kind of going I into the I thought he wanted to get all Pokemon. That, that kind of goes into that whole subliminal development thing that I talked about earlier. Like, it's not in your face, but it's kind of like, oh, maybe maybe he is reconsidering his goal. Maybe something is going to change here with his approach in the near future. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. I, I do think it's a little different. strange at the very least that we've gone three whole episodes and Go has not caught a Pokemon. I, I know something. I noticed something, too. Koharu gets her. She gets a Pokedex in this episode, which none of us which are is, talking about. Which is, by the way, yes. the yes. Sun and Moon Dex. It's, it's, pink, it's pink, and it, it's got a guy talking on hers. Well, and I think actually, that actually, no. Familiar, um, Tyron, actually, no. <laughs> no, that, that all, all it is, all it is, is the narr- it's the narrator voice, only yeah. more happy. I still think that's funny though. A guy's <laughs> talking on hers. Like, yeah, like yeah, like a guy would be talking on hers, but the girls talk on the. Yeah. That's funny to me. <laughs> I don't know something about that's just a little hilarious. And also, it's a phone, right? So basically, yeah. Sakuragi said, "You don't get your phone until you capture a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, no cell phone until you catch your Pokemon. Damn it." <laughs> But yeah, she's got a Pokedex. Evo, Evo, Satoshi's, uh, Satoshi's Rotom phone has the same voice as Koharu's now, except that Satoshi's is more subdued and hit, and Koharu's more happier sounding, but they're the same VA. It's a, it's the same yeah. as an area. The only different one is Ghost, which is the nice, great, excellent. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is which is like I said, you know the the let's play let's play Actually, Mar- team let's play, let's play Mario. Too. Well, yeah, I mean, par- let's play Mario and uh, I Colts, I Colts, like freaking ten dollars for just saying two lines. And I'm then, assuming yeah. we're actually going to Galar next episode. Is that what yes? Doing? I hope so. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes they are. Galar fossils. Yeah. So this is the fossils. actually be Galar the fossils. first time that Chloe or Koharu travels with Ash and Go. So. No, Hoenn, Hoenn. Oh, she was in Holland with them. Oh, she got well. She didn't like do anything with them. She was with her father most of the time. Yeah, and then they went to Holland to help a girls out in the uh the the water program. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That counts too. Yeah, but that's yeah. yeah but this will be the first time she actively goes there of her own. For what we know yeah. so far, anyway, we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, she was just kind of going to help the other girl. She's gonna get the Drake of Fish. Like she's, she's just catching Pokemon she, one after another. She catches another. more Pokemon I, I than Go now. I want to talk about the Drake of Fish real quick. I do not want to see the whole Anapoke community blow up on Twitter on January the eighth. Yeah, January the eighth. If Ash doesn't catch that Dracovish, because I can Don, already see it now. Give me a fucking five. Oh, yeah. I can already see that now, where people are going to do the same thing they did when Ash didn't catch the Eevee, or Ash didn't catch whatever other Pokemon. Swamp and they're going to be like, this epi- oh yeah, Ash didn't catch the, the Marsh Stomp, and they're going to be like, this yeah. episode is terrible, because everyone said that Ash was going to catch Dracovish. Like, Nobody no. said shit. Yeah, review it on your own. 
own thing just because you listened to a bunch of people who hyped it up and said Ash is going to catch Dracovish did not mean that was ever a real possibility. Y'all are just assuming <laughs> that he's going to catch Dracovish. And, and, so, and of course, oh, and of course, in this business, assuming you, only makes sense out of yes. you and me. Thank you, John. Jesus don't, fucking Christ. Don't call so the episode a flop just because he doesn't catch Dracovish because that was something that you Although to be fair, that March Trump episode was a flop, capture or not. Oh yeah, that was yeah, a bad I mean, example. I mean, I mean, I mean that, that episode. I mean, that episode was shit. But that's not. That's not yeah. because of the, the point. The point is though, like <laughs> an episode shouldn't be terrible just because Ash doesn't get a Pokemon that you thought he was gonna catch. Mm. But he yeah. has to focus on on his current. Who? Moves. Yeah, it's like, it's like people are like, <laughs> oh, Ash, Ash needs to catch Sorry. Pokemon. The only it's ones like, I know well, are. Does, let me see. Blue Dog Pikachu and Yellow Rodi. Yeah, yeah. Pikachu and Lucario. I, this, it's no, like, this, it, catching that far fetched make any difference for his overall team so far? He only no. just looks badass. Yeah, this is in the what open. I want That's to happen. It. I want Gary Oak to appear and catch the Drake. The the hell, why is he in Galar? He's, he's, <laughs> because he's a, a he's, he studies fossils. I got this mutant fossil ashy boy. <laughs> Perfect way to bring him back. You know. What a way to start off twenty twenty one. I just realized Farfetch has only been in one fight, and I think it lost that fight. It did. Yeah. Wow. And it was supposed to have a rematch, <laughs> if you recall. Wow. Which, by the way, it wow. never did because no. that went to Pikachu. Pikachu. Wow. That Ash. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like your first loss. Wow. I ain't using you again. You were a mistake to me. Wow. Why are you training with Riolu in the opening? It, it's then? just another one to add to <laughs> wow. the lies of openings that we've seen in the anime. Like with Black and White with Charizard versus Reshiram. Or Sun and Moon with the Charger Bug. Or not Charger Bug, I'm sorry, the Grubbin. That's... And now here we go. Well, I always chalk that up as if you want to bullshit, I thought like he caught the Grubbin, it evolved into Charger Bug, and he gave it to, uh, to Sophocles. Yeah, but that would left. still canonically be his capture before giving it to. Which, I mean, he technically True. caught it, but not caught it for the dex entry. <laughs> right. Uh, still, though, I do appreciate but, uh, that capture, though. I guess we got to talk about the damn Dracovish preview, which Why I... Why is everybody only talking about Dracovish and not utter disgusting mutant that's also going to be joining them? Because Dracovish, well, for two reasons. One, Dracovish was on the poster. And two, Dracovish is the most famous, is one of, is a also, famous DGC. Also, it's model. never been hinted that Dracovish was going to Ash. It could be the other one. Yeah, literally. It could literally, be the there other is, disgusting there zero, mutant. We don't know. Yeah, there is zero realistic evidence that points to Ash catching this Dracovish, and yet I think most of the community has already assumed that he's going to catch the Dracovish. So let me just go ahead and say, your assumptions are dangerous. Exactly. For all Back we off. know, he could catch <laughs> a Pokemon that just happened to be there that's not a fossil and go get all the fossils instead. What about, there's, isn't there Dracozolt and the, the ice ones? The... Aquazolt, Arcto, Arctivish, Arctivish, and Arctozolt. Yeah, yeah he could he, did, he could two. accidentally make an Arctozolt and catch that shit. You know, you guys also had that assumption about Sable back then as well, if you recall from that trailer, which it looked like it hinted at Ash. And I kept telling you guys many times that's gonna go straight to go, but that was also because I hated the starters. So, uh, but the thing is, it yeah. still came out true. Meanwhile, though. meanwhile, Grippy. Yeah, meanwhile, Grookie's dead Good. in the fucking Hip field. The, 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 the longer this man is out of my space, the better. As long as... I kind of yeah, don't that, want Ash to... I kind of don't want Ash to catch any damn Pokemon. That's, that's the example I should have used KG was the Sobble and not Marshtop because people actually did think Ash yeah. was going to catch Sobble. I was so. like the only person, yeah. I think, that I was mentioning that it they wasn't going to happen. They were making team predictions. Yeah, they, they were making team predictions with all, him already having fucking Inteleon on it. I'm like, guys, stop. <laughs> Go doesn't Please. need those fossils, they will die and goes negligence. Yeah, because the freaking what was it? The Dracovish is gonna need like a little bubble for a head, and if it doesn't, well, it's gonna drown in the air. Last we checked, last we checked, isn't Go the only one that found a fossil canonically? You know, yeah. Yeah, Arid Oh shit, he caught Aerodactyl. I forgot. Amongst the other mons <laughs> he caught. Right. This show doesn't give a fuck about the other Pokemon, do they? <laughs> Damn. No, it's because well, of that Aerodactyl capture turn that that's leading into the Galar fossil stuff. Because I believe they mentioned that they got told by the director or something like that to have them go to Galar to meet with those other people there. Mm -hmm. And I think that ties into the Aerodactyl yeah. episode. I do like that we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get uh, Kara, uh, Doc Professor Kara Liss. 
I, I like I like the gimmick. I like that she's this shitty, incompetent professor who doesn't know how things work. And in, she's that one she in Sword and Shield where she does this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Wearing her name is shoes and yeah, literally, literally, her name is Kara. Her name is Kara Liss. Careless. I love it. I I love it. Yeah. So I, I like that they made. I like that they. I like the idea that there's an incompetent professor because I don't think we've had any incompetent professors since OG. Like professors that are weirdly that have these weird gimmicks. I still love I'm, Professor Elm. Oh, Professor Elm is in, in, his gimmick is that he's too far in his studies to actually pay attention to people, which I, I think is funny. Yeah, sure, no problem, Nurse Julia. But I believe there was one, the guy who actually invented the Pokedex, if you know, if you decide to rip oh. Professor Oak away from him. Professor, oh. I can't remember what his name is, but he, he made- a weird name. Yeah, but he made the Pokedex and he did the slow bro, slow poke thing. He's funny too. Westwood, thank you, Professor Westwood. He was pretty funny. I liked him. And then you got Professor Ivy, which I think her her gimmick is that, that name. <laughs> yeah, her gimmick, yeah. Professor Ivy's gimmick is that she's lazy. I think is her her thing. She's just lazy. <laughs> she's mm -hmm. fucking lazy. She can't clean up. That's why Brock had to Westwood. Be, yeah, that's why he was. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's why Brock had to be her bitch for like a floors to be swept, clothes to be swept. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say the whole line. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I need yeah, to know it by heart. She's like, we we just didn't have time and we ordered takeout every day. I'm like, you are you are trash, Ivy. <laughs> you are just, just okay. trash. When Ash was like, dumps are a lot cleaner. <laughs> yeah, remember that shit. <laughs> oh oh god. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's cool to see a it's cool to see a silly professor. Oh, Those man. are always fun. Mm -hmm. mm. Actually, I All wish right. those I wish those scientists could have led into the whole Dracovish thing for the next episode. That would have been. I'm gonna just say but... this now. No, I would. I, I would. I'm still... gonna just say this now. They're going to create the fossils, and then those women are gonna be like, "Oh, by the way, because they were found in our shit, you're gonna need to give those Pokemon to us for research purposes." And they'll be like, "Well, so much for that capture, Bruh. and just give the Pokeball to them." I I yep. I don't think these two deserve the. F it's not that they don't deserve no. it. It's just it, I don't think that they're going to. It's, it's no, not going to work, work. especially because you're going to need Draco Vicious joke. Draco Vicious <clears throat> joke is going to be literally it drowning itself in the middle of the battle because it doesn't have a bubble on its head. <laughs> and we're not and, and and we're not we're not in sun and moon and we're not God in sun and moon territory with the freaking cocaine. Although, binging, and, so although if that happens with Draco Vicious, then I'll, I'll be happy with that though. Uh, I'll get uh, if, if, but only if, 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 you know, it's not will, oh, it's oh, if, not Pokemon will, Pokemon if, if Ash catches the drink of ish, I want to see the SpongeBob bowl on his head. <laughs> you, you know, like yeah. the accessory, like all I want. the twig, the shades, all that. What about Draco Vish? A I giant want him to have ass the fish, fish tank. I don't. <laughs> I don't need this suit, and I don't need this helmet neither. <laughs> Do we that's have to wear pickle jars? And again, that's if. That's only if. It's that's not guaranteed. If. Yep. If it's happening, I want the. I want the the fish. I I, I, I can't do wait do where he uses his head, but <laughs> just shards of glass just go into the Pokemon. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, <laughs> just. It's a one hit KO. Yeah, you're hearing that song in the background while the two Pokemon are down on the ground crying in pain from the glass shards that landed in their eyelids. This hurts. We'll find out soon. We'll find out soon. Give or take three weeks. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. Um. The only the only things that I'm that I'm really hoping for in the next two weeks because like I said uh, M twenty M twenty two airs next week in the time slot or this this Friday and then um, at five fifty five p.m. and then the uh, Christmas special comes along. I'm just hoping that we get more more shit on M twenty three. Um, that's probably what's going to happen. So even though even though it really will make no difference in terms of the anime, at least uh -huh. we're going to have more information on M twenty three. Yeah. I'm hoping for that. And plus, well, hey, it's new shit. So I can't really say anything about that. Um, we're not gonna get any New Year's recap, unfortunately. It's not on the docket, it's not on the schedule, so um so I think the Christmas special is supposed to be kind of like that. 
But again, it looks like it's just going to be like maybe a re-airing of maybe the Mewtwo episode. I don't know. Nobody knows. All we know is it just says, um, it says um, Pokemon TV anime Christmas special. That's it. That's all we know. And it airs on Christmas Day. Pokemon ending list when? Uh, <laughs> well, that requires everybody here to uh, listen to all the endings. And I think only three people yeah. probably did it so far. Yeah. Can we? Oh. Oh, I want to do it so badly. Oh, and I guess if you really want to poke at continuity for a second, don't because this is a gimmick because of the games. But obviously with the heart on Evie's tail, technically, technically, this is the only female Evie in fucking that it's owned by a female traveling campaign. That's not true because we got the Sylveon Eevee from Pokemon XY. We don't but know if that. You look at the, <laughs> oh, Lord. If you want to look at the pattern on the tail, all the Eevees we've seen technically would be male, even though that's not true. Well, I just think yeah. it's funny because, like I mentioned last week, they've already retired this gender difference in Sword and Shield. It was a let's go only thing. Sad so. face. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny that the Let's Go Eevee is still here, but it's not in the game that, anymore. That pisses yeah. me well, then off, again, man. Then again, no, then again, no, remember, it's in Kanto, so I guess they wanted to keep that. Yeah. At least, at least they wanted to keep some continuity in yeah. terms of that. Hey, would you look at the time, though? Yeah. Would, would you, you look, look at, at the time? time? Uh, sad boy oh. hours, man. Hey, Peter, would you look at the My time? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> But man, it's going to be a interesting interesting new year for Pokemon. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Kai, what Unfortunately, the fuck, this is going to be You came This late. is going to be one of those situations which honestly after which, midnight by the way, this completely represents journey as a whole. We'll just have to wait and see. And that, oh. that just hurts to know that that's pretty... That, you know, that, that's kind of sad that that's basically year one <laughs> of gonna, Journeys, in my opinion. Chat. Journeys year one is just we just got to gotta wait and see. Wait a minute. Look at, look at the yeah, chat. Yeah, I see it. Good, they're asking good morning. Our, our, our good, one of our oh, good, good morning, good morning, morning everybody. In the stream. <laughs> good job, John. I had to get it yeah, out of my system. Twice, actually. Yeah, considering considering that Ben freaking took a pot shot. Yeah, I know. I was about to say that. Did you see Ben? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> he yes. did. Yeah, yeah, he took a legal team out here, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, but hey, now hey, John, hey, John, it. just to just think that just think about it. We're gonna get a Cars mm. freaking animated series. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just go sleep oh, in my Cars <laughs> blanket with my Cars pillow and just appreciate. It. KG's gonna review the Cars anime. Wait, wait we never even, wait. We never even talked about the Disney Son, project. The, the, the what thing, on. Richie? The, we never even talked about like. The, the Marvel, the Disney, the Pixar projects, shit. Well, yeah, because we don't know uh, jack shit okay. about it. And also, Richie, yeah, you know, if you want to, this is the perfect opportunity for you to promote your shit, to actually, too. Because you talked about one of the things from that Disney event. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. I mean. Yeah, because it... But no, um, for a more serious promotion, um, on the r 97 channel, I put up a video where I discussed one of the projects, which is called Lightyear. Just to give a quick little rundown, just so we can end this fucking show. Um, basically, mm-hmm. I talked about the, I talked about the project, um, my opinion about Chris Evans being Buzz Lightyear, and where I think that project's going to go as far as what like, the direction of it, what are they going to do with the plot, and all that other stuff. Uh, so, if you're interested, um, it's up on my YouTube, R Far Dude ninety seven. Um, basically, the same same username as my Twitch, so it shouldn't be that hard. Um, but yeah. I'll be looking forward to be um blah, I'll be looking forward to posting more content in the near future. Vote on the poll, by the way, on Twitter, because I'm asking you, the people, to help me decide what I should do next. So, yeah. That's so it. there you go, chat. Um, obviously there's still one more session we got before we go and wrap things up for the Pokepod world in the year of 2020. Uh, we're probably gonna have like a additional, but it's gonna be like a, a mini session or something to celebrate the end of the year. You yeah. think of it like a a Christmas yeah. special, not necessarily an episode, but just more so a special, just celebrating uh, the things that have happened within 2020 and just looking back at this year and seeing how much has changed and where things might go for the future. But uh, we do hope that you guys will tune into those and have a good time with us and celebrate the. 
the time that we've shared all together because it's been 72 sessions. That's like 140 something hours, man, in itself, you know. Mm. You know, we, we, we've put enough mm. to where you can watch this shit like consistently for the next five to six days on just the world ca- uh, podcast alone. Uh, and it makes me happy to see that many people have grown to appreciate and love this. And of course, we thank you guys so much for continuing to support us for for all these years. And I'm looking forward to seeing what year two will follow with this. Hopefully, PM19 uh, will do just as great as well. And we'll just continue to have a good time. But until that moment arrives, of course, once again, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> so, before we wrap things up, I want to give a thank you to everybody here in the call. To Tyron the God 3, TSS Killer, R Farley Dude 97, Age of Trades, and JPRPT98. All of these wonderful folks here you can find in the description down below in the friend segment. So make sure to go and check them out. Follow them in their respective Twitter accounts. And then from there, go and check out all their channels and follow them there too if you have yet to do so. Uh, We have some things that will be announced later in the week. There's still some stuff you might not know yet. But it is going to be an exciting end of the year. I do say so myself. And I'm looking forward to a lot of the fun that's going to come out from this. And we hope you guys will enjoy it as well. Uh, But we'll keep you guys a little updated on that in uh, due time. So do not fret. It'll come in just some time between now and later. I I I don't know when that later is. But you guys will know soon. So Except except that this now and later doesn't isn't sour. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm looking forward to 2020's end of the year for this stuff. Uh, I'm also happy, you know, taking this opportunity right now just to see the Annie Polk scene thrive beautifully in the YouTube community. It, it's okay. been growing oh, yeah. great. I, I'm loving the new and old faces. Yeah. I'm loving that. Yeah. Technically, we're seeing the passing of the torch to the new generation now of the Journeys era, which makes me very happy to see that as well. I'm loving to mm-hmm. see some new folks. I see I... like Zoro or say, uh, you know, wonderful folks we have in the Annie Polk Discord. Uh, Shout out to my boy Xanolift. You're going. You're going to be yeah, on a great path to many great yeah, things, my to man. Them, to, to the to the poker chat Girl. as well, which is filled to the brim with a lot of wonderful folks there, like Trey Goggles. Uh, right. You know some of the folks we had here in our sessions before, like even uh, our boy Media Nut as well. There, there's so many things that I'm looking forward to within the Annie Poke community and. Uh, I can't wait to see what 2021 will offer them. And I can only hope for the best outcome for every one of them. And it's going to be great to see the new era come in and bring something fresh to the table that we have yet to see within the world of Pokemon content. So look forward to them, man. You never know. They might become the next big thing and you want to be one of the first to be there for them. So, uh, yeah. Until then, though, ladies and gents, I think that's going to be a wrap for tonight's session. Tune in again once again next week on... uh, well, I'm not going to say when, but just tune in next week to the next session of the Pokepod World Podcast when we decide to tackle a certain topic that I think a lot of you will enjoy. won't say much now. You'll find out soon enough. Let's wrap things up then, folks. Once again, thank you guys so much for ju- tuning in. We'll talk with all of you guys later in whatever video we make. Take care, everybody. And as always, make sure to have yourselves an awesome day. And with that being said, I am going to randomly raid in. Wash your fucking that too. hands. I'm going to go and... Uh, and drink your and drink fucking water. And wear your mask because we don't want the shit to go over exactly. 5%. Wash, wash your, your, wash yeah, your washing hands, Wear that shit. Wash, wash the washing. them washing hands. Ba, 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 ba. All right, everybody All right. then. Good night, we'll See you guys then. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great Bye-bye. night. Pokemon. Shut out.